The Idiot by Dostoevsky. Dramatized for radio in four episodes by Melissa Murray. With Paul Rees as Prince Mishkin, Alex Jennings as Ganya, Roger Allen as Rogozhin, Leah Williams as Nastasia, David Swift as General Yapanchin, Paula Jacobs as Mrs. Yapanchin, and Stephen Moore as General Evolgin. Episode 1. longer will this train take? We have fallen from our high estate. Only an hour ago, we were indecently drunk. Now, we are merely disgusting. You were disgusting. Yes, but I apologize for it, sincerely. Don't be cross with poor little Lebedev. We are in public, remember? He can get a little rough sometimes. Who are you talking to? That foreigner over there. Foreigner? It's the coat that gives him away. What the devil are you talking about? That's how I know he's a foreigner. Very thick enough, I grant you. But look at the kind of cloth, Italian. What use is an Italian coat? What use is that in a Russian winter? So, we must conclude that he is a foreigner. I don't care who he is, as long as he doesn't stare at me. Besides, what self-respecting Russian would ever, in any circumstance, wear a coat with a hood? Excuse me? Oh, he's talking to us. Listen for the accent now. I think it must be me you're speaking about, as I'm the only other person at this end of the carriage. My coat I bought in Switzerland. I've been away from Russia for years, and perhaps I forgot quite how cold it is here. In Switzerland, eh? What were you doing in Switzerland? A long holiday, visiting family? Uh, you were a student. I went for reasons of health. You're a nosy devil. Don't answer him, sir. Vulture. No, I, 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 I don't mind. Why should he mind a few civil questions? So you were ill. Very ill? <laughs> well, of course you were. You'd hardly have gone all that way for nothing. So what was the problem? I'm an epileptic. At least it's not contagious, eh? I had been very ill. I'd had so many bad fits that by the time I got there, I was almost an idiot. But you are better now. Oh, I'm much better. Or perhaps the money ran out and the doctor suddenly declared you cured, eh? Very common, that. Well, for the past two years, after my little inheritance was used up, he kept me out of his own pocket. But he kicked you out in the end, eh? No. I wanted to come home. What is your name, sir? Prince Leo Nikolaevich Mishkin. We were not a great family, small landowners for the most part. My father was in the army. I am the last of us. Uh, not altogether the last. You have one relative in Petersburg. How, how do you know that? He is the kind of insect who prides himself on knowing everyone else's business. Oh, he, yes, I do have a relative. Not a close one, mine. Some years older than me. She is married to a General Yapanchin. And has three very marriageable daughters. But you knew that, no doubt. How extraordinary that you know them. I am only a humble civil servant, but everyone knows of the Apanchins. I know the fellow who works for the general. I've met him. What's his name? He's another vulture. Ganya something. Mm. They are a rich, ambitious family and will be very pleased to see you, no doubt. You intend to call on them? Oh, yes. I intend to call on them this very day. I need advice. For instance, at the moment, I have no idea where I will be staying tonight. Mm. You have no money, I take it? No. And that small bundle at your feet there, I would bet, contains the sum total of your worldly goods. Well, Prince, you are a hero out of a fairy tale. They will undoubtedly greet you with open arms. I only wish I was there to see it. Pay no attention to this man. He is a rogue, a villain. He battens on young fools and stays with them all the way to the debtor's prison. It's true. And that is why you're with me, isn't it? Yes, sir. Prince Mishkin, allow me to introduce myself. I am Lebedev, a drunk and hanger-on. And this is my current patron, the inestimable Ragoshin. Surely you know who he is. Oh, I'm afraid I don't. Why should he have heard of me? The son of Semyon Ragoshin. Oh, I, I, I'm a very ignorant man. Who died only last week and left his young heir here a very nice two and a half million. And the joke is he didn't even know. 
He didn't know a thing until I found him in Pskov, lying fast asleep in bed with a fever. I was his celestial messenger. He will make me pay for being the bearer of such good news. I will, I certainly will. The old devil, my father, had threatened to disinherit me, but in the end, in the end, I am the winner. I'm always the winner, Prince. Ask him how he got the fever. Ask him what he was doing in Pskov. Ask him about Nastasya Filipovna. I've told you not to mention her name! <laughs> Imbecile! Sorry, Prince, I, I did not mean you, of course. Oh, no, 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 of course not. I won't talk about her. Nastasya. <laughs> Nastasia. No, no, um, don't, don't distress yourself. I'll tell you how I got sick, though. It all started when my father gave me a beating. A terrible, terrible beating. Worse than ever. Oh, it was a work of art. So I ran from the house, took the first train in the station, and ended up in some flea pit hotel in Pskov, where this bloodsucker found me lying in dirty sheets in a fever. A fever. <laughs> Fever of rage. And the reason he beat you? The reason he beat me is because I took 7,500 rubles he gave me to put in the bank. I took them and went to the jewelers. And there I bought the most beautiful diamond earrings. I ran round immediately to Nastasia's house and threw them at her feet. He did, at her feet. There were witnesses. And he'd not even spoken a word to her, just seen her in a box one night at the French theatre and fell headlong in love. So romantic. She didn't even smile at me. Anastasia is not a smiling kind of girl. If you say her name again, I swear I'll thrash you. I bet the prince would love to hear her story, wouldn't you? Perhaps I will another time. Glad my father is dead. The beating he gave me killed him. How could he die of a heart attack? Bastard didn't have one. Mm. I will tell you about her then. Nastasia Filipovna was left all alone in the world at the age of eight. Mother, father, sister, all dead. What would become of her poor orphan? Luckily, her father's old friend, Mr. Totsky, came to the rescue. If you can call it rescue. Well, perhaps his intentions were good. How often we have good intentions. I myself am positively afflicted with good intentions. <sighs> Nevertheless... After paying for her upkeep, her education, until she was, what, 15, he decided, to put it delicately, to reimburse himself for his efforts. Uh, you are a man of the world, Prince. Can't you see he isn't? Let me tell you what he did to her. He violated her. He abused and debased her. Oh, all that was years ago. She's now 20-something. And our Mr. Totsky wants to be rid of her. Why? Because he wants to marry a society wife and he needs to cut free of his past indiscretions. Uh, that's one part of the reason. The other part is that he is a little afraid of her, of Nastasia. She has grown into a most formidable creature. The question is, will our young lady let him go? Uh, not because she wants him, but because now she can torment him as he tormented her in her days of innocence. Oh, is there anything more satisfying than revenge? And she has the advantage of not minding what she does. She is capable of anything. And Agoshin here thinks he can persuade her to come to him. Now he's rich. But I think she would like to destroy us all if she could. Uh, that is my humble opinion. Oh, that is a terrible story. It is a true one. And guess who's a great friend of Mr. Totsky? Guess. How would I know? He is a great friend of General Yepanchin, your relative. You may have the pleasure of one day shaking his hand. Prince? Yes? I will give you a proper coat. A fur coat. I'll give you money. Thank you. Come to my house. Perhaps you're a sign from God that he has not oh. forsaken me. I, I would be pleased to come. But first, I must go to my cousin's house. I wrote to them and told them that I would be coming, and I would not like to disappoint them. You are the least disappointing man I have ever met. Prince Mishkin, I am the General Secretary, Ganya Ivolgin. Uh, you have just come from Switzerland, I believe, and claim to be a relative of the General's wife. Uh, might I inquire with all due delicacy the reason for your presence here? Oh, I hoped to make myself known to the General and his family. A charming thought. 
Unfortunately, the General is a very busy man and has little time to make new acquaintances. Very well. Where are you going? I'm leaving. In very good spirits, I assure you. Please send them all my regards. No, I, I didn't mean... Don't be so hasty. The General will see you in his study. But mind you do not detain him for too long. Sit down at the desk by the window. I have to have a word with Gania here. Uh, certainly. Uh, what does he want? Um, is he genuine? The nerve. What is he? My wife's cousin four times removed or some such nonsense. Men in my position are always being pestered. I'll get rid of him if you like. Is that your advice? What will my wife say? She knows he is here. <clears throat> exactly how old are you, Prince? I am 26. I took the liberty of bringing this little bundle with me. Apparently, mm. these are the prince's worldly goods. Mm. Oh, this is all very unaccountable. I'm sorry to have caused you this embarrassment, General <sighs> pension. And you came here straight from the train station. You have no hotel room, nothing arranged. Were you hoping to stay here? No. I've been so long out of the world because of my illness that I have forgotten the correct way to behave. I, I should not have come here. Listen, Prince, I think you're a good man. A little, uh... What's the word, Ganya? Presumptuous. Um, uh, look, perhaps I might be able to help you. My wife would wish it. Yes. The note you sent me was, uh, was very well written. Mm. I could find you a little work as a clerk, perhaps. Thank you. You would not object to such employment? No. The correct civil service script is very specific, General. I can write in any hand. It's a skill of mine. Uh, copy uh, that, if you please. In the correct style, and then we shall see. You may use my pen. What? This is extraordinary. It's an invitation card to a birthday party. Hardly that exciting. Hand it back. It, it's just a name on it. Nastasia Filipovna. I wonder if it is the same woman. Now he claims to know Nastasia. Do you know Nastasia Filipovna? Well, I know of her, I think. A young woman and, and an unfortunate... Oh, not so unfortunate. Ganya here is about to be accepted as a husband. Oh, that's good. Do you think so? How did you hear of her? I was told something of her story by a man I met on the train, a Mr. Ragoshin. Uh -huh. A nice man, but in great emotional turmoil. Ragoshin? He's an animal. Oh, how marvellous. The woman I am thinking of proposing to is discussed on trains by the likes of Ragoshin. What do you have not asked her yet? I thought the matter was all settled. Mr. Tosky believes the matter is all settled. We had hoped to announce it tonight at her birthday party. You know, of course, that my mother and my sister have sworn to leave the house the instant that Nastasia enters it. Oh, you will manage your women folk. They strike these attitudes, but when they consider, when they experience the very real advantages that will flow from this marriage, they will sing a different tune. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're right, Prince. When they know her story, they will pity her. Pity her? <laughs> I don't think a young and very beautiful lady with wonderful prospects needs anyone's pity. <laughs> Many people have her interests at heart. Mr. Totsky, more than anyone, wants her respectably settled. Leaving him free to offer his hand and considerable fortune to the General's eldest daughter. <clears throat> Would you marry your daughter to a man like Mr. Totsky? <laughs> uh, uh, you do have a way of saying things. Uh, no, to return to the subject at hand, all of Nastasia Filipovna's friends want to see her happy. She is... Oh, she is very beautiful. Would you marry a woman with so many past and present admirers, Prince? Well, I am too ill ever to contemplate marriage. Besides, I know nothing of women. I heard that story of Ragorjin and the earrings. He's a rich man now. Do you think he will marry her? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? Why don't they just auction her off and be done? He will probably take her off their hands without the nice fat settlement they've offered me. He might even pay for the privilege. Well, I am glad to see you two speaking uh, so uh, confidentially. It chimes in with a proposal I was about to make. Uh, Ganya, your mother takes in lodgers, does she not? Yes. Is there a room that the prince could take, do you think? <sighs> Anything at all to oblige you. 
General, your pension. <laughs> That's all nicely settled then. Now off you two trot. Oh, uh, I will see you later at Nastasia's party, Ganya. No. You won't let me down, will you? No. First, you might take the prince along to meet my wife. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you for your kindness to me. We all like to behave well sometimes. Ganya. Mr. Ivogin. I'm afraid that you are angry with me. You feel that I have overheard or rather witnessed matters that are your private affairs. My life is ignominious. I am ignominious. Do you know what the word means? Yes. Then be quiet about it. Here is the door to their sitting room. I will open it and announce you. Why not? I'm no better than a footman. Footmen, at least, are not obliged to pimp their wives to their employers. He'll want me to do that after I marry her. That's why the amount they've offered me to marry her is so high. What do you think of that? So I said, no. Prince Muskin, to see you all. Oh. This is Mrs. Yapanchin. May I introduce you to your cousin, madam? Oh. And these lovely ladies are her daughters, Alexandra, Adelaida and Aglaya. You'll excuse me, I have work to do. It's a great pleasure. I to swear that young man gets ruder every day. How does the general bear him? He has a lot to put up with. Ganya, I mean. You may as well sit by the fire, Prince, and let me look at you. I got your letter from Switzerland, but I hardly expected you would just arrive like this. <laughs> well, you are handsome enough in a harmless way, but why are you wearing such shabby clothes? I'm a poor man. Pour the prince some coffee. Don't fill the cup too full. You had better tie the napkin round your neck, I suppose. Why is that? In case you have a fit. Mother! Oh, this is a Persian carpet. I don't mind in the least. Well, you should. Perhaps the prince would tell us about Switzerland. Did you like the mountains? Yes, I like to live surrounded by them. It was very soothing. There is nothing restless about a mountain. Take a sip of your coffee. And a bite of this lovely almond cake. Oh, I don't want to hear about the mountains. Everybody always talks about the mountains in Switzerland. Tell us something else. Tell us the most moving and extraordinary thing you saw in your travels. I think not, Miss Aglaya. Is it because it is improper? Something shocking? Both. Oh, he's trying to be intriguing. No one is to ask him to explain what he means. Why not? Why can't we ask him? I am not trying to be intriguing, I assure you. I will tell you about the most moving, the most terrible thing I saw, because it is a thing that is burnt, literally burnt, into my mind. It was in Lyon, in the city square. I was there when they executed a man. How horrible! An innocent man. No, a very wicked man. Does it matter? Can you imagine how he felt as they drove through the town in the back of the cart? How he must have looked round him, thinking, I have three more streets to live, two more streets, and then finally he's in the square. It's packed with people all shouting, all staring, all there to watch you die. They got him to the ladder, and when he saw it, strong man, cruel man that he was, he burst into tears. On the ladder, his face was pale, but on the platform, he became literally as white as a sheet of notepaper. I could see how his legs became weak. He must have felt sick, too. There would have been this intolerable sensation at the back of his throat. Did you ever experience a moment of terror in which your reason remained unaffected, but all your power to move, all your will to act even, has gone? The house is about to collapse, but you can't stir. You wait to be flung to the floor and annihilated. He looked round, and he saw the whole world rush to vanishing point. No animal could have felt such fear. No devil either. This is a very shocking story for a lady's sitting room. Yes, but it is important to me. I wanted you to know. To know what? To know that there is misery, cruelty and death in the world. We're not that ignorant. Prince... You are a good man. You have a feeling heart. I have a feeling heart. 
Perhaps we are not the most intelligent people in the world. Perhaps we have not read the modern books. But we have read our Bible. We know the value of compassion. You may untie that napkin. Forgive me. Are you offended? We will be great friends, you and I. <laughs> I like your forthrightness very much. You see? You can be charming. Tell me this, Prince. Have you ever been in love? That happiness, no, I have never experienced. Will you answer any question, however impertinent? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, I must go now. I have to find my new lodgings. I hope that I will see you all before very long. Go with my blessing. I can't decide if he's a total charlatan or if he is sincere. Either way, what does it matter? Psst! Come here, now, quickly. We have to talk. Is it far from here to your mother's house? Get in I here and be quiet. Need to keep it open a crack so that I can see her. See who? Miss Aglaya. Any moment now, she'll come out of the sitting room. Hey, walk down the corridor. She goes into the piano room. There. Listen. She always practices for half an hour before her piano teacher comes. So we have very little time. For what? Prince, I will be honest. I'm an honest man, aren't I? Plain spoken, if a little irascible. I find you difficult to understand, to be truthful. And your opinion is worth what, precisely? Oh, well, listen, perhaps we've got off on the wrong foot. But I'm willing to make amends. How? By placing myself forever in your debt. Prince, I must beg you to do me a favour. I would like to help you. Good, that's settled. All I want you to do is to take this note, knock on the door, and deliver it to Miss Aglaya. Why can't you take it yourself? No, complicated reasons, difficult reasons. If I told you this note could make or mar my life forever... I'm not sure I should do this. Would you like me to humiliate myself and actually go down upon my knees to you? No. Take it, then. And hurry. The piano teacher is horribly punctual. I have not sealed the note. I won't read it. I go. Go in. Is that you, Herr Stempel? Please come in. Please. I knew it was not Herr Stempel. His knock is quite different, much crisper and more confident. Oh, please continue to play. You're fond of music? Fond of it? How can one be fond of music? It's too magnificent a thing to be fond of. It raises us up out of this world into... Oh, if it affects you that powerfully, I'll be afraid to continue. Who knows what raptures I might inflict on you. I don't mind if you make fun of me. I tell you that now, in case you think back over this conversation and are ashamed. What do you want with me, Prince? I have a note for you here, from Gagne. Uh, from Mr Evolgin? Your father's secretary. I'm not sure of his surname. Oh, read it to me. I don't think he would like that. Are you always this considerate? I think the matter is of some importance, Miss Aglaia. To Gagne, at least. He is... Well, he seemed very unhappy. Read it to me or simply tear it up. Those are the choices. Tonight, my fate is to be sealed. I am to propose to that woman. I am to pledge myself to that woman. I do not ask for your sympathy. What right would I have to do that? Speak up, it... dear Prince. Throw out your chest, fill up your lungs and speak. I would not wish to lose a word of this for worlds. But if you were to utter one word, a single word, I would step back from this abyss. I would break it off in an instant. And this word would only be a sign of your compassion towards me. Nothing more than that, I understand. I ask for nothing more than that. I will accept my miserable fate, my poverty, for just one word from you. Do not be angry with a man who strives right to the very end to save himself from moral ruin. He signs his name, and that is all. Well, Prince, what are your thoughts? What is your advice? Shall I utter a word, a single word, and save this man from moral ruin? Do you have feelings for him? Feelings? I have feelings. Tell me, have you ever read anything so crude, 
so insulting in all your life. It's not a very well-written note. He has not done justice to himself, perhaps. He tells me all he wants is a word. But, of course, if I were to say that word, it would commit me. He knows that. He will not let Nastasia and her money go unless he is sure of me. You know about her. I even know they've offered Ganya 100,000 roubles to marry her. Oh, it is shameless. It is shameless. And once, you know, I did like him. I did think he had qualities, but greed, greed, it's, it's consumed him. Hand him back the note. Tell him I read it and that I sent no reply. And as for you, keep well clear of him from this day on. I am to lodge in his mother's house. Your father arranged it. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. He will be your enemy now. Oh, yes. He will blame you for his failure with me, for his humiliation. I hate people. No, you don't hate people. You have a noble soul. You hate meanness and subterfuge. I see it in your eyes. You see an 18-year-old girl. That is all. I won't be romanced at. Now, I, I must practice for my music lesson. Please go. Miss Aglaya. Now, now you tell me everything. Every detail, every word. First, you gave her the note. I gave it to her. Did you say it was from me? Yes. Excellent. Did she seem pleased to get the note? Well... Oh, why am I asking you that? Let's get straight to the heart of the matter. She took the note. She read it. Did she read it quickly? Did she read it quickly the first time and then go back and reread it? Did she say anything? M mutter something? What? No. What an informant. Well, Prince, what did she do when she read my note? She didn't read it. What? She refused to read it. She said that either I read it to her or I must just tear it up there and then. So I opened the note. What? And... You read my note? Well, I, I was unsure what to do. I thought that you would want her to hear your message even if it came via me. You're lying. I'm not, I assure you. Liar, liar, liar. I'm sorry that you are so upset. But please, do not call me names. What was her response? When you read it to her, what did she say? She said that she would send you no reply. She said nothing? No. But she sent no reply, no formal reply. She did speak a little about how she felt about the note. But I think you might find that upsetting. Do me the honour, sir, of telling me what she said. She thought that you were trying to compromise her. She mentioned the amount of money that you were offered to marry poor Nastasia Filipovna. Uh. She thought you unwilling to let that go unless you had in some way secured her. Miss Aglaya, I mean. She was insulted, she said, but she also said... Oh, yes, this is wonderful. Uh, uh, let's, let's walk. We're attracting attention. She also said, or hinted, that she had once liked you, but now she thought you greedy. Greedy? Oh, the rich always think us greedy. Well, we shall see, Miss Aglaya. I have a trick or two up my sleeve yet. I'll make you grovel yet. I'm sorry, Ganya, to be the bearer of such bad tidings. But I think she might forgive you. Forgive me? But do you know what is really interesting in all this? Miss Aglaya, so proud, so private, decides to make a confidant of a sorry specimen like you. How in the name of God is one to account for that? I think it would be better for us to part. It is true that I've been ill and that I'm not used to being with people, but still there is no reason to abuse me. I understand that you're upset and disappointed, but that is no reason for you to be rude to me. I will find other apartments and explain matters to the General so that he will not be angry with you. You are right to be offended. Please, with my hand on my heart, I beg you to forgive me. Oh, I'm in such trouble, such pain. It maddens me. I behave badly. If you knew how much I stood in want of a friend. Come home with me. I beg you. There is no need to beg me. I would be more than happy to be your friend. Come, let us get on. I'm becoming very tired. It's not good for me to get too tired. 
What on earth is behind that mask of his? I could go first and spy out the lie of the land. Stay here. And where are you going, my fine lad? Get your pig hands off me! Well, seeing you're such a big fellow, I'll be civil and ask again. Where are you going? To see Nastasia Filipovna. You've missed her by minutes. But she'll be back early tonight for her birthday party. Bring her something nice and maybe she'll smile on you. Where has she gone now? Oh, the impatience of youth. <laughs> I don't like old men. <laughs> Five rubles. Where is she? Here is your room, Prince Mishkin. Dinner is at four o'clock. You may either eat with us or here in your room, whichever is more convenient. Thank you, Miss Varia. I am sorry our mother is not here to make you welcome. Yes, yes. Well, Prince, it is a dark little dungeon, but it will do you, I suppose. Uh, the whole place smells of cabbages. Stinks. Will I send someone to fetch your luggage, sir? That little uh, beggar's uh, bundle is all he owns in the world. Let's have no airs and graces. I will leave you to get settled, then. Your sister has a very kind manner. Plain people often have very kind manners. They're obliged to have them. She's not in the least plain. You have an opinion about everything, don't you? Um, look, don't mention anything here about my private affairs. Mm. Can you manage that, do you think? Uh, yes. Uh, the, the, the sitting room is down the corridor. Why don't you trot along there and meet the rest of my charming family? My father is an incorrigible liar, a drunk, and talks all kinds of nonsense. He'll claim to have carried you in his arms when you were a baby. Long, long ago, he used to embarrass me. Uh, I have a brother as well, but you can ignore him. Well, I'm off to lie down. I might even try and calm down. Off you go. Good afternoon. I am the new lodger. I oh. hope I'm not disturbing you. Please continue reading. My name is Leo, by the way. Nikolai, but everybody calls me Collier. I'm Ganya's brother. And Varia's. She's told me all about you. Shake hands? Oh, certainly. Um, Prince, I have something to say. I'm listening. If anyone asks you to lend them money, on no account do so. Lend no money to anyone in this house. Do you hear me? Yes. Secondly, if anyone says anything ridiculous, unbelievable, don't laugh. Don't mock them. That's a commandment. I won't. I've been mocked too much myself to take pleasure in another's weakness. Well said. You may sit down. You've come here from Switzerland, I believe. Yes. When I travel, it'll be to the tropics. What's the point of going somewhere as cold as this place is? Uh, no offence. Oh, none taken. My God. My God, who would ever have believed it? His living image. Sir, you are... Well, you must be, Prince... Mishkin. This is my father. General Ivolgin. Retired. Unhappy. Your full name, sir? Uh, Leo Nikolaevich. The son of my dearest friend, my childhood companion, Nikolai Petrovich. My father's name was Nikolai Livovich. Prince. I'm sorry. To think that I should see you here in my house. I used to carry you in my arms as a baby. Father. A babe in arms, because your father and I were comrades in arms. I was at his bedside and blessed him before he died. Your poor mother, your poor mother. Died six months later from a chill. A chill? Oh, mm. Is that what they told you? Is that what you believe? No, sir. She died of grief. She died of a broken heart. And it was greatly feared by all who knew us that I would follow them to the grave. Would you like some tea, Father? You've heard the story of the duel, of course. Sir. I don't think so. He doesn't want to hear it. I I'm... was passionately in love with your dear mother when she was betrothed to your father. It was very shocking. The prince, your father, came to my apartments before seven in the morning. He spoke no word. What could words have said? I dressed. He took two pistols from his pockets. Within five minutes, one or both of us would be hurtled into eternity. We loaded, aimed the pistols at one another's hearts and looked at one another. Suddenly, T 
tears gushed from both our eyes. As one man, we flung our pistols to the floor and fell weeping on one another's necks. She's yours, I shouted. She's yours, he shouted. It was beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> that is a most interesting story. Thank you, thank you. My daughter tells me that you have come to live in this house of ignominy, this house of shame. Wouldn't you like to take a rest, father? How am I to rest? Tell me that, prince. You know about the marriage? Of course you do. All oh. Petersburg must know of it. A marriage between a woman of doubtful virtue and a young man with shining prospects. My son, Ganya. Well, sir, it shall not be. I will lie down across the threshold of my home, sir. I will lie down. Let Nastasia Filipovna enter then. If you don't stop this instant, I will fetch Varya. Let her step across my dead body. Let her trample. Or would you prefer it if I asked Ganya to come in? No. No. That is why I am unhappy, Prince. My children, my own children, where is the respect? The reverence! A nest of vipers! Oh, father, you can't speak so of me. Oh, he is my dear boy, Prince. Come here and kiss me, my beloved son. <laughs> Come here and kiss me too, Prince. Son of my dearest friend. Come, I insist. Oh. <laughs> I am a feeling man. My heart is full. Tell me, Prince, might I trouble you for a small loan until the end of the week? I'll take it off the rent. The prince's rent! is to be paid directly to me. There will be no point whatsoever in asking him to give you any money. I absolutely forbid him to give you any money. Is that understood? Yes. yes. Prince Mishkin, will you do us the honour of dining with us? Oh, you are very kind. You're all very kind. Don't look at the photograph. Photograph? On the mantelpiece. Don't say a word about it. Oh, the soup is cold again. Oh, what do I care? It is very nice soup. I see, Prince, mm. that you are staring at that photograph. No, I, I wasn't. It doesn't matter. That is a photograph sent round to this house today by my brother Ganya's intended bride. <sighs> It was sent to this house by Nastasia Filipovna, who is about to become my sister-in-law. I thought we had agreed The that prince we is probably wondering why our mother is not eating with us. She's very beautiful. The prince is referring to Nastasia Filipovna's photograph, no doubt. My mother is only an ordinary, decent woman and not beautiful. Why not indulge ourselves in another disgraceful scene? My mother sends you her apologies, prince, for her absence. She is lying on her bed, weeping with grief and shame. There's no need to apologise. I'm sorry to hear that she is unhappy. Perhaps if she were to meet Nastasia Filipovna, she might feel a little better. She might pity her. Keep out of my affairs. I've warned you. Children, children. If an old man, an old broken down and wounded officer might interpose a word, might offer a little soothing counsel. How much has he had? Don't talk about father in that way. Schoolboy. You were supposed to get someone to fix that. I bell. have had other things on my mind. I will go. If you will give me a moment, I myself will go. No, I am nearest to the door. Please, let me. Oh, thank you, Prince. You took your time. Sorry. If you're too lazy to mend the bell, you should wait in the hallway to hear when people arrive. What are you doing? Why are you staring at me? I'm... You've dropped my coat. I'm... They ought to give you the sack. Hang it up, man. There, on the rail. Must I teach you your job? What an idiot. Sorry. Now, when you're quite ready, Go in and announce me. Yes. Wait. I haven't even told you my name yet. I know who you are. <sighs> Nastasia Filipovna is here. What? It appears that I've come at an inconvenient moment. <clears throat> Aren't you going to introduce me to everyone, Ganya? You look. And I hope you don't take this personally. Very like a fish. With your mouth open like that. A trout. 
<sighs> Take a sip of water, Ganya. I'll feel better in a moment. I must manage for myself, it seems. Make my own introductions. Uh, you are his sister, Miss Varia? Tell me this. Where are the lodgers? I expected to see a sea of lodgers. We only take in a very few. Nastasia Filipovna. He is speaking at last. Well? Allow me to introduce Prince Mishkin, one of our lodgers. That is the footman. No, I am not the footman, but it is easy to understand how you made the mistake. I'm not in the least offended. Have we met? No. Then how did you know who I was? Oh, my portrait is on the mantelpiece. How sweet! <laughs> how romantic. Tell me, Prince, do you think the photograph does justice to my radiant beauty? No. Do you think it conveys the absolute excess of my exquisite charm? No. No? There's a look in your eyes. A terrible look. And who is this old fellow with the dyed moustache? Who is he, Gania? My father. And I am Collier, Gania's brother. <coughs> Madam, you see before you an old, broken-down, but brave Russian soldier. Oh. In the defence of my country, I have suffered. I have been wounded. Have you? In the defence of my country, I have been bayoneted. I have been stabbed with sabres. I have been shot at. Oh, for the love of God, sit down. Shot at? There are three bullets in my chest lodged so close to my heart that the surgeon refused to even attempt their removal. They must rattle terribly when you cough. <laughs> Father, I like you, General. You are what you are. I would like to see you again. You must come and visit me. I mean that. <sighs> you would be amazed at how lonely... I feel sometimes. You and I could amuse each other. You do look remarkably like a footman, Prince. I feel harried to death. Is there somewhere I can sit down, do you think? Oh, <laughs> off you go, Prince. Time to do your duty again. Ah, hearty greetings to one and all. Nastasia Filipovna! Nastasia Filipovna, I have come. I swore I would come. Drunken louts, you must leave this room immediately. Can't you see that my sister is in this room? I see a lot of soup bowls. Is that Ganya? Is that Ganya standing there in a waistcoat? Prince, my dear Prince, you must let me in to embrace him. Surely you remember me, Gagne. You cheated me once at car. You keep away from me. I'm warning you. Valia, call the police. <laughs> get out. Get out now, animals. Stand behind me, ladies. I will protect you. Come along to the drawing room, gentlemen. That would be the best thing, and I must ask you both to behave yourselves. Now, do you promise? We will be as beautifully behaved as, uh, as two ballerinas. <laughs> we will, as long as no one annoys me. <laughs> Nastasia Filipovna. Nastasia Filipovna, what can I say to you? Valia, I insist that you leave this room. Why did you follow us in here? To see your bride-to-be. To get to know her. I've been running around the city all day trying to find you, and now that I have, what in God's name will I say to you? I'm not an elegant, I mean eloquent man, Nastasia. Tell her you've just inherited a fortune. So recently he hasn't had time to wash or change his clothes. You're such an ignominious creature, Ganya. If I were to take three rubles out of my pocket, you would crawl across the carpet and pluck them from my hand. A man who cheats a car. I have never in my life... Oh, what's the use? Why do you think I have come here? Why? To make an exhibition of yourself? That's true. We can't deny that. Never mind the clothes I'm wearing. I've pots of money. Gallons yeah. of it. Enough to buy you all, all of you. I came to you immediately to throw myself at your feet. And also because I heard this rumour, this ridiculous rumour. Tell me, Nastasia Filipovna, are you really going to marry this man? No. <gasps> of course not. Hurry! Oh, shut up, Varya. Look, perhaps it would be better if we were to all sit down and be quiet for a moment and think a little. That's wonderful news. They lied to me, they're the filthy dogs. They told me you were engaged. 
engaged to this worm. I didn't <laughs> believe it. I came round here to buy him off. Not for three rubles. You needn't worry, Ganya, but for 3,000 rubles. Well, it seems I don't have to. But I'm a generous man, aren't I, Prince? That's another thing. You still haven't explained to me what you're doing here. But I knew uh, we should meet again. I knew. What was I saying? You get out of my house. Well, that was a bit feeble, if you don't mind me saying. So. I'm not saying I'm a good man, Nastasia Filipovna, but I'm a generous man. Here in my hand is 18,000 rubles, oh. all for you. Oh my God, put it away, man. This is not the way to treat Nastasia. And 18,000 is only the beginning. There is something so refreshing about vulgarity. True, heartfelt vulgarity. <laughs> what do you think, Prince? Do you think I'm worth 18,000 rubles? 40,000? I'll uh, give you 40,000. That's enough. Nothing is enough. <laughs> I'll give you 100,000. Yes, I will. And I'll still give you your 3,000, Ganya. You have the word of a vulgar man. How much exactly did they offer you to marry me, Ganya? <laughs> He's been very coy about that. Tell me, Ganya. Did you ever feel anything for me? I will not discuss my feelings in front of these people. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote me poetry, you know. <laughs> Rather good poetry. He stole the best lines from Pushkin. <laughs> Nastasia, can we talk privately? No. <laughs> will nobody remove these shameless creatures from the house? Is it me you're accusing of being shameless creature, Miss Faria? Is it me? Oh, that is charming when I came out of my way to this godforsaken dump to invite you all to my birthday party tonight. I would even have lent you a decent dress. <laughs> no, Varia, don't say anything more. This is not your quarrel. My dear friends, think how ashamed you will be when you remember all of this later. That's the advantage of vodka. I remember nothing. Who asked you for your opinion, you pathetic pauper? You leave the prince alone. You leave that poor little sheep alone. Bring your money, Ragozhin. Bring it. And I will give you your answer. Oh. Nastasia Filipovna, I will speak to you, if I may. This behaviour of yours, what does it mean? You are not the kind of person you pretended to be today. You are neither cruel nor shallow. You are causing pain and confusion. You must not do that. Especially someone who has suffered as you have suffered. I know I sound naive, but... No. You are right, Prince. I am not the kind of person you've seen me be today. Forgive me. Will you forgive me? Oh, yes. It is easy to forgive you. <laughs> I am leaving. Yes, I am going. You're all still invited tonight, everyone. Especially you, Prince. Here is my card. Please come. Thank you. You've lost her, can you? Uh. Yes, you have. And I will win her. I will win everything. Am I disturbing you? <sighs> I've been walking up and down the streets for the last two hours wanting to apologize to you and knowing that I would hate you if I did. So I've not come to apologize, but to explain. You all right? A little tired. Today was disgraceful. <laughs> no, no, you stay on the bed. Can I sit down? <clears throat> Listen, I've decided once and for all that I will marry her. I will marry Nastasia Filipovna for her money. And do you know what that makes me? I'm not sure. It makes me a man of principle. Yes. Because I have not lied to her or to the world. I'm not spouting a load of progressive liberal nonsense about redeeming fallen women. I will not pretend anything. I am a mercenary animal, but I'm not a hypocrite. Besides... Go on. Once, you know, I... I did feel for her. Did love her, I think. Oh, you are smiling. You are thinking of the note I gave Miss Aglaya. Well, Prince, it is possible to love two women at once. I know nothing of love of that kind. 
kind of love. I don't judge you, Ganya. You don't like me. There have been times today when I have not liked you. But now, when you're being simple and sincere, I find I do like you. There is one thing I would like to ask you. Do you think Nastasia will accept your proposal of marriage? It seemed to no, me... No, that scene with Ragojin was just nonsense. To annoy and provoke me. You're very confident. She liked you. Our Nastasia was impressed with you. Tell me, Prince, did your heart flutter a little for her? No. You're blushing. Well, we are all only human. We are all usurers at heart. I will take her, take the money, and you shall see what I will make of myself. My ambitions are worthy, even if I am not. If I had married Aglaia, it would have given me social position, but money, money will do the trick. What do you say to that? Perhaps it will end happily. When I have money, I will become a moral man. I will behave with decency and delicacy once I am rich. I will be able to afford all sorts of virtuous behaviour then. Money is not always a blessing. What a very trite thing to say, dear Prince. You're beginning to hate me again. Yes. When I'm not in your company, I think you're the most marvellous, calm, admirable person. But when I'm with you, it's a different story. That is often the case with me, so I don't blame myself. I'm a complex character. You are unhappy. Only idiots are happy. But then maybe not. You've a mournful look about you at times. <laughs> there I go again, calling you names. I'm incorrigible. And yet, for all that, I'm not a bad man. Perhaps you pay yourself too much attention. Well, I need to get dressed if I'm going to this party. I will get Varia to sponge my black silk waistcoat. I have only one, of course. Do you know, I wish I had taken that 3,000 of Rogozhin's. I wish I had snatched it out of his hand. That would have taught him a lesson. Yes, I have decided Nastasia, not Aglaya. I hope it won't break the poor girl's heart. I don't think it will. <laughs> you know nothing of women. I think I will take a rest now. Exactly. That's exactly what you need. A nice rest. Good night, Ganya. Close your eyes and sleep. No, it's impossible. I can't stay here. What are you doing, Collier? Varya told me to sit here and make sure no other madmen enter the house. <laughs> You've taken over my role as footman. <laughs> <laughs> she is quite a nice person, Varya. A little mean and spiteful sometimes, but the situation is worse for her. You understand? Yes. I mean, she is a woman, you know. She thinks of marriage. And all this scandal, it might put off potential suitors. Oh, I see what you mean. What a very insightful boy you are. Mm, I have no choice. They scream all their nonsense in my ears, day and night. When are you going back to Switzerland? I don't know that I am going back. If you ever need a travelling companion, here I am, willing to go at a moment's notice. Are you going out? Can I come with you? Yes, you can come with me. I'm getting tired of all this walking. <laughs> Are we going anywhere special? Aren't we just going out for a drink? Do you go out drinking, Collier? At your age? No. But I have to go out with my father to make sure he gets home. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll make sure you get home. Don't worry about that. I'm not going out drinking. I'm going to Nastasia Filipovna's birthday party. What is so special about her? What? I mean, she is beautiful, but why does that matter? She has made Ganya ten times worse than he ever was. He came to see me earlier in my room. I wasn't sure why. Then at the end, I understood. He wanted to be sure that I wouldn't come to the party tonight. When people plan to behave badly, they don't want witnesses. He's going to ask her to marry him, isn't he? 
Everything's uncertain at the moment. You don't look dressed for a party. They probably won't let you in. <laughs> I wish you would come home with me. Do you play chess? Badly. Thank you for coming with me. I felt a little unsteady in myself. To tell you the truth, I wanted a little company. I I'm, I'm quite well. This is my first night back in Russia. I'd forgotten. Forgotten what? What it was like. <sighs> will you shake hands with me? I liked it when we shook hands earlier. I will be your friend forever. <laughs> I swear it. Go home, Collier. Say your prayers and sleep. What name, sir? I'm probably not on the guest list. What name, sir? My name is Prince Leo Nikolaevich Mishkin. Here is Prince Leo Nikolaevich Mishkin. <laughs> Prince! I was just telling them all about you. That was episode one of The Idiot by Dostoevsky, dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray. Prince Mishkin was played by Paul Rees, Rogozhin by Roger Allam, Ganya by Alex Jennings, Nastasia by Leah Williams, General Yapanchin by David Swift, and General Ivolgin by Stephen Moore. Lebedev was played by Gerard McDermott, Mrs. Yapanchin by Paula Jacobs, Aglaya by Tracy Ann Oberman, Collier by Karl Prekop, Varia by Gemma Churchill, and The Concierge by Martin Heider. The Idiot was directed by Cherry Cookson. The Idiot by Dostoevsky. Dramatized for radio in four episodes by Melissa Murray. With Paul Rees as Prince Mishkin, Alex Jennings as Ganya, Roger Allam as Rogozhin, Leah Williams as Nastasia, David Swift as General Yapanchin, Paula Jacobs as Mrs. Yapanchin, and Stephen Moore as General Ivolgin. Episode 2. actually came to my birthday party, Prince. How charming! How surprising. Now, who do you want to meet? We have important people, obscure people, men and women, young and old. I, I came here to see you, Miss Darcia, to talk <laughs> with you, if, if that's not impertinent. Over there is our guest of honour, Mr Totsky. Mr Totsky rescued me as a child when I was only eight. You've heard the story? My parents died very suddenly, but luckily, luckily, an old friend of my father's, Mr Totsky, heard that I was orphaned. Being a kind, disinterested gentleman, he rushed to my side to protect me. He has been protecting me ever since. Debaucher! And here comes General Yapanchin to prevent a social scene. I'm very surprised to see you here, Prince. He arrived at our house only this morning, you know. A long-lost cousin of my wife's. She found him very engaging. How is your wife, General Yapanchin? Hmm? My wife? Very well. Do you see, Prince, the pearl necklace I'm wearing? How much do you think it is worth? Oh, I I'm afraid I have very little knowledge of jewellery. Oh, it was given me this very morning. Guess who gave it to me? Oh, this is quite unnecessary. I will have no secrets from the prince, none. Well, it is worth 5,000 rubles. Oh. That's what the jeweller offered me. He's coming to collect it in the morning. You're selling it? The prince wishes to meet my benefactor, Mr. Totsky. Excuse us, General. <sighs> they think so meanly, so cheaply of me. A pearl necklace. <laughs> They have set up their neat little arrangements. You know that the general plans to marry off one of his daughters to that devil Totsky. But first, they must see me settled. They must silence me. And do you know what they plan for me? 
Of course you do. That, that is one of the things I want to talk to you about. They plan to marry me off to Ganya Ivolgin. They'll pay him a fortune to take these tainted goods off their hands. And he would do anything for money. Oh, you see him standing over there? <laughs> He's vainer than a woman. Of course, once I am married, General Yapanchin hopes that my husband would be a compliant man. The General intends me to be his mistress. <laughs> Have you ever heard anything so amusing? <laughs> I cannot believe that to be true. That would be infamous. Yes, it would be. <laughs> but it will not stop them. <laughs> and here he is, Mr. Totsky, with hair discreetly dyed and a fresh set of teeth from Paris. Surrounded by admirers, as always. Come on, Prince. Quietly. <laughs> now, let us surprise him. Believe me, gentlemen, I speak as an homme du monde, a man of the world. Subtlety, subtlety above all else. A certain delicacy. They are butterflies, easily crushed. Charming, effervescent creatures, requiring, the best of them, a certain hothouse luxury to... Uh, Encourage that special bloom of beauty. <laughs> to keep butterflies, Prince, it is necessary to have a large bottle of chloroform and a nice sharp pin to pierce them with. Then, once they are dead, by all means put them in a glass case for other men to admire. Mr. Totsky, Prince Mishkin, will you shake his hand, Prince? Oh, no. He has a flabby handshake. I'm afraid I didn't catch your name, my dear sir. Oh, I am Prince Leo Nikolaevich Mishkin. Ah, the mysterious Swiss gentleman. Yes, I have heard of you. I I'm Russian, not Swiss. Uh, but you were in Switzerland, uh, no? I was abroad there for reasons of ill health and returned here to my native land only today. He knows exactly who you are. It's just one of his affectations. Uh, I heard you were something of an invalid. No, don't worry, I won't have a fit. I haven't had a fit in a good two years. A fit? I'm an epileptic. How remarkable. No, it's better than having false teeth. <laughs> Prince, as you know, Mr. Totsky and General Yapanchin, um, come over here, General, are both extremely anxious for me to get married, freeing Mr. Totsky here to make a mutually beneficial matrimonial connection, connexion matrimoniale with one of the General's daughters. <laughs> that is the plan. And all I have to do is agree to it. Well, Prince, what shall I do? I will do whatever you say. You're asking me... I'm asking you if I should marry Mr. Ivolgin. Ganya. This is not a matter... Yes you... or no? No. No, you should not. <laughs> An announcement. Ganya Ivolgin, I have to tell you. On the Prince's recommendation, I've decided not to marry you. I will never marry you. Let that be the end of the matter once and for all. Nastasia Filipovna. Are you going to say something, Ganya? First, let me thank you, Nastasia Filipovna, for the extraordinary delicacy you have shown towards me in giving me your answer here before all these people. I am even more grateful to the prince who has done me the honour of involving himself so thoroughly in my private affairs. From this day forward, I will lead a new life. General, take back your pearls and give them to your wife. Oh. Mr. Totsky, oh. I announce to you and to the whole world that I am my own mistress. I'm 25 years old and in the teeth of you all, especially in your teeth, Mr. Totsky, I declare myself to be an independent woman. Oh, yes, here it comes, a finishing touch. It's him. Ooh. Ragozhin. He's a madman. He thinks if he offers her enough money, she will go with him. He promised her he would get a hundred thousand rubles by tonight. Perhaps he has it and has come to claim her. Come in, come in! Madam and assembled personages, I am proud to announce that my good friend here, Mr. Parfion Ragoshin, pursuant to his word given to this delectable lady this afternoon, <laughs> has visited every moneylender in the city and has raised on proof of his imminent inheritance the staggering sum of 100,000 rubles in cash. Here it is. He has come to claim his reward. <laughs> Don't be shy, Mr. Rogorjian. Don't be shy. Nothing is embarrassing about money. Show it to us. I will keep all my promises to you, Nastasia. Wrapped up in newspaper. What a nice touch. Nastasia, you must not allow yourself to be maddened. You must not. 
I beg you. You beg me to what? To refuse his money? Why? There is more nobility in being Rogozhin's slut than in being Ganya's wife. Oh, thank you again. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> she knows what my love is worth. I've brought the proof of it. I'm not a learned man. I'm not an educated man. If I had been, I might have wooed her in other ways. Why are you looking so mournful, Prince? Why shouldn't I become Rogozhin's slut? Answer me. Answer me. What decent man in all the world would marry me now? The Prince would, if he's your idea of a decent man. Would you? Would you marry me? Yes. You would marry Ragorjin Slut. I wish you wouldn't use that word. You are mine. My heart. My love. My slut. You are not Ragorjin Slut. You have been misused, terribly misused. You have suffered unspeakably and you are in torment. I see that. I see how much you disgust yourself and blame yourself, but I tell you, you are pure. No, you are innocent. You have committed no crime. And you have been reading too many novels. No, I will go with Ragorjin. It is my duty to go with him. My queen, I will give you gold to eat. <sighs> your duty? How is it your duty to throw yourself away like this? I, I, don't, I do not mean to insult you, Mr. Ragoshin. I know, I know, but be careful. I'm not always answerable for my temper. Indeed he isn't. Shut up! Oh, this is a madhouse! You should marry some milk and water maiden, Prince. One of this good general's lovely daughters. That's the kind of woman you need. Miss Aglaia, let me recommend her. I will thank you, sir, if you wish to stay in my employ, not to mention the names of my daughters in this kind of company. Oh! Bravo, General. Not this kind of company. Oh, I, I meant, I, I meant, Madam... Uh, I think the oh. Prince is going to cry. Don't cry. None of this is your responsibility. Let me tell you something. I dreamt of you long ago when I was young. My benefactor here, Mr. Totsky, used to visit me in the country retreat he'd prepared for me. He would stay a month, two months, to dishonour, insult, excite and deprave me to his heart's content. But all the while, I dreamt there would be someone in the world who would come to me one day and say, none of this matters. I love you, and I will cherish you all my life. I will say those words. <laughs> I will say those words and mean them. None of this matters. I will marry you, and I will cherish you all my life. Trust me. We can't change the past. God does not allow it. I've had enough of this pantomime. I'm oh. leaving this instant. How much money exactly did Totsky and the General offer you to marry me, Ganya? Where is the 100,000 rubles? Give it to me, Rakoshin. Here it is, my angel. Is it mine now? I can do whatever I want with it. Yes. Kiss me. <sighs> <laughs> I want to give it to Ganya. I will give all of it to him. What? Yes, you can have it. You can have it all, but first, an experiment to see which demon dominates your soul, vanity or greed. Here is the 100,000 rubles, a fortune. I will throw it into the fireplace. And you, dear Ganya, must put your hand into the flames and pull it out. And once you have done that, the money is yours. <laughs> she is reckless and magnificent. Nastasia, you are better than this. One, Please. two, three, there! Oh. One hundred thousand rubles, Ganya. If anyone but Ganya stretches his hand to the money, I'll brain him, and that includes you, Prince. For God's sake, grab it, man, grab it. Oh, the lovely money. You conceited fool. Go on, I'll make you take it. Don't let go of me. Let them think you're a fool, a greedy fool. Let them laugh at you. What does it matter? Are you all right, Ganya? Oh, I need air. He's turning away. He is actually turning his back on the money and walking out of the room. Well... There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. His vanity is greater than his grief. Oh, 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 oh. oh he's fainted. <laughs> now that is funny. Someone pull the damn money out of the fire and tuck it into his pocket. He can have it. He has earned it. I'm off. I'm leaving with my handsome, ugly, generous devil. 
Are you ready, Ragozhin? Come. Where are you going, Prince? I'm... Prince! Wait! Wait! Oh, what shall I do now? Come home with me. That's what you should do. Kolya, what are you doing here? Have you been waiting all this while, you poor boy? You must be frozen. No, I'm not. I'm a Petersburg boy, and it would take more than a bit of wind and snow to make me shiver. I have to follow her. Why? Catch your breath. <sighs> she decided against marrying Ganya, then? That's off? Yes. Oh, that's a relief, I suppose. Your brother is ill. He fainted. Nastasia was cruel to him, so cruel. You must go up and find him. Take him home. He will be very angry. He will abuse you. But you must be patient with him. I beg you to be patient. Don't go after her, Prince. No, I must. Oh, I wonder sometimes if all adults are idiots, or is it just the ones that I know? You will grow up to be a good man. <laughs> You'll more fool me. Why must you involve yourself in all of this? If you see someone rushing headlong over a precipice, what do you do? Do you stand and watch? You don't leap after them, that's for I sure. I want to help her. She is like a bright star falling into ruin. Oh, well, poetry. But also, Collier, the life of an invalid. I have been an invalid almost all my life. It is sometimes like being a member of a different species. I don't know the most plain and obvious things. People laugh at me. Sometimes they feel kindly towards me, and I'm grateful, but... Well, supposing a man like me, an odd creature like me, dreamt that perhaps his life too could have meaning. You want to help her to make yourself feel useful? Yes. Yes. I think it is partly that. And also because I find it unbearable. Human suffering. I used to sit and dream in the long evenings of all that I might do in the world. Very heroical dreams. Of course, now that I'm here, I feel uncertain and bewildered. Nevertheless, I will do what I can. Kolya? Yes? Will you go and find your brother and take him home? Because you asked me to, I will. Thank you. Take care, Prince. That's it. Last one leaving tonight. Won't be another Moscow train till morning. You'd best go home. You look done in. Thank you. You are sure? Helped her aboard myself. Not a face you'd be likely to forget. Nor his. Sorry. Wake up. Wake up, damn you. Hmm? What? What is this place? You're in your hmm? room, in our apartment. Huh? You're a lodger here, remember? You've fallen asleep on the bed with your clothes on. <clears throat> I do that sometimes when I'm drunk. Are you drunk? No. We're more alike than you think. Did you see the way I fainted tonight? Like one of your fits, wasn't it? No, not really. Kenya, I'm asleep. Not before you answer my questions. Did you find her? No. But you know where she's gone. Moscow. I've been walking around for hours trying to think what I should do. Uh, I'm sure of one thing. I'm not asking you for advice. You needn't hope that. Here. Take it. If you can't see it, you can smell it. Burnt newspaper. It's the bundle of money she left me. I want you to take it to her. I want you to hand it to her with these words. Madam, I have been sent by Mr. Evrogin. There's no point in giving me a message. I won't remember it. Then just give it to her, then, without a word. And make sure that Rogozin sees you do it. Will you do that? I'll give her the money. Are you really going after her? Yes. Prince. I must and... sleep. I must get into the bed. Oh, you really are all in, aren't you? Steady on. Sit on the bed. Get, get undressed from there. 
Would you like me to wait with you until you're asleep? No. I meant that kindly, though I myself hate people seeing me asleep. Thank you, Ganya. Good night. Might I have some coffee? Where are your sisters? <sighs> I will not have lax manners in this house. People must learn that there is order in the world. Alexandra is in bed with a severe cold, as you do know. Do not presume to tell me what I do and don't know. And Adelaida is at this very moment... Do you take no interest in the fate of your daughter, sir? <sighs> he thinks he can give me a pearl necklace and I will forgive him. For what reason do I require forgiveness? Coffee, please. For introducing that imposter into my house. I have already had the honour to inform you that Ganya Evolgin has been dismissed from his post in my household. Oh, poor Ganya. Why do you say that? Because someone should feel sorry for him and no one does. <sighs> I was not talking of him. I was talking of that pauper you pushed into my drawing room. The one what? who claimed to be my long-lost cousin. A well-known trick. My dear, there can be no doubt that the prince is your cousin. You say that, of course, to provoke me. My dear, there and is no... And to wound oh. me. Would a cousin of mine run off in pursuit of some trollop all the way to Moscow? Not a word or a sign from him for weeks. Aglaya, Aglaya, will you leave the room, please? Oh. Do you think that everyone doesn't know? <sighs> all our daughters knew that you intended one of them to marry this Mr. Totsky. This Nastasia woman was his mistress. And now the prince has run harem scarum halfway round the world in pursuit of her. For your father's no. and coffee. Oh, yes, mother. Why has he gone after her? Why? Don't you care that this scandal reflects so badly on our family? We may have to leave the country. Oh, that, my dear, will not be necessary. Any connection between Totsky and one of the girls is now clearly impossible. And for myself, I am barely civil to the man. He is being dropped by everyone. As for the prince, I will say this. I believe his motives are noble. Mm. He views Nastasia Filipovna as in some way a victim. He fancies himself her, her saviour. She will destroy him. She will destroy him for the pleasure of it. Can't uh, you help him, father? I am trying to help him in a practical way. I won't have any more to do with Miss Nastasia. That matter he must manage for himself, no. But I have been in contact with his lawyers. They had no idea he was back in the country. Well, 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 the good news is there is an unclaimed inheritance owing to him. Oh. Yes, and far from being a poor man, he is now quite comfortably off. That's some good news, isn't it? Will he come back to Petersburg, do you think, Father? Perhaps, but my last report suggests that he has still not found either Nastasia or Rogozhin. Until then, our knight errant will no doubt feel duty-bound to stay there, in Moscow. Oh, come in, Miss Lebedev. Come in and, and sit down. What lovely manners you have, and what a lovely jacket. Does that colour suit you, do you think? I heard you had come into a little money. Now, look at me. Don't be shy, look at me. What do you see? That you have been beaten. You have a black eye. He thrashed me. Me thrashed by him. Ragoshin. Of course, Ragoshin. Do you think I would allow any other man to mark my face with his fists? I'm sorry that you've been hurt. I think it would be good for you to separate yourself from him. But at the moment, I'm concerned to hear news of Nastasia. I've been trying for weeks to find her. Do you think I have come here to betray my friend simply because he has beaten me up? I did not ask you to betray your friend. All I wish to know is the whereabouts of Nastasia Filipovna. You accuse me of being like Judas. I accuse you of nothing. But if I am he, does that make Ragushin a kind of Christ? What do you think, Prince? I think this is not a fit subject for jests. Why do you want to find her? Do you know where she is? Now, please, help me if you can. I'll tell you this for nothing. She doesn't love him, but that doesn't stop her. There have been disgraceful scenes, nights of such sin, orgies of vice. What can a man like you offer her after that? A respectable marriage? I don't wish to discuss that with you. Well, he has offered to do the same. Marry her. I told him he was a fool, and then out flew his fists. Yes, ah, she was getting fed up with him anyway. So I helped the lady make her escape, hired the carriage with my own money, Took her to stay at my sister-in-law's in the country. She has taken to reading the apocalypse. Uh, Nastasia, not my sister-in-law. 
not, I venture to suggest, a good sign. What do you think, Prince? I will go there immediately. Uh, but not before you give me some money, eh? A reward for information received. Yes. How much do you want? Want everything. Need 125 roubles. I say that to impress you with how exact I am. You count out the money while I write down the address. Don't look at me so, Prince. I am impervious. Some day you will say something or look something that will make me ashamed of myself. But today is not that day. Nastasia? It is Prince Mishkin here. May I come in? I had almost forgotten you. Yes, come in. Well, I'm very pleased to have found you. Would you like to kiss me? I would like to talk with you. I can do other things than kiss, you know. Are you tongue-tied, Prince? I brought you something from Ganya Revolgin. The money. The money you put into his pocket that dreadful night. Ganya? I'd almost forgotten him as well. I'll put it here on this little table. Will we sit down, Nastasia, and be comfortable? You can sit down. I'm looking out of the window. What can you see? Come and look. It's Ragozhin. I thought perhaps I might be free, free of you all. But what would I do if I was not trapped and harried on all sides? I am not a hunter, Nastasia. I am your friend. <laughs> you know I would never harm you. I would never hurt you. I've come here to help you find peace. If he sets foot in the garden, I will do something. Throw myself out of the window. Cut my veins open like a Roman. Do you want to wave to him? He's very jealous of you. Would you have married me? I would have married you, and I still will, if you would do me that honour. Is it because you love me? Yes, I love you. Is it because you pity me? Who could not pity you? Nastasia, listen. I've come into a little money, enough to take you abroad for a while so that you can rest and get strong. You're not well, Nastasia. That is the difference between us. You would marry me out of pity while I would marry him out of sheer spite, out of malice, to destroy him. To destroy yourself. That is a matter of course. Oh, get out of this room, Prince. I feel a great rage coming on me, a great resentment. I know very well how to torment you. You think you're above all this filthy passion, don't you? Come here. You're right. I will go for now. I will leave you time to think that I am your friend, Nastasia. <laughs> Always. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. Oh, there's a real incentive to excel myself. <laughs> Get out! Are you the best that God can send to save me? Let's walk. You followed me here. Did Lebedev tell you he had given me this address? How are you? you? You've not been taking care of yourself, my friend. We'll walk back to the station together. Arm in arm, if you like. I should warn you, though, you have every reason to be afraid of me. Don't let the fact that I like you deceive you. Don't let the fact that I have tears in my eyes just looking at your kind face deceive you. We, we will do as you say. We will walk. I, I, I will tell my driver to follow behind us. You have a carriage now, Prince. Lebedev told me you'd come into money. That's good. That's excellent. You needn't blush. No, the driver is only hired for the afternoon. But you are right. I am a little ashamed to have money. May I ask you something? You can ask me anything. You are a man of feeling. Don't you pity her? Will you see how she suffers? Let me rescue her from you. Isn't that what you wish in your heart? I want so much to believe that. 
Let's walk. And I will think how to answer you. Do you wish sometimes that we could be like those children playing innocently in that garden? Playing innocently? That's what you think because you don't remember. Children are savages. We are saints in comparison. You must have been bullied when you were a child. Oh, yes. Unmercifully? Unmercifully. <laughs> <laughs> I would have protected you. Listen, Prince. I don't know what world you're fitted for, but it's not this one. You don't love like a human being. I know you pity her, but I don't. What I feel for her is not pity. Any moment of tenderness I've ever felt for her was just a sign of my exhaustion. She exhausts me, and I will have her, at whatever cost to me, or to her, or to you. I look at her. I hear the sound her dress makes as she moves. I hoard every word she said to me like a miser. The abuse, the taunts, the incitements. When she is asleep, I stare at her until my eyes burn. Calm yourself, my dear friend. Never. You know, once she tried to stab me. You must give her up. I don't say this from any selfish motive. You are bad for each other. Now listen to me, Parthian. I have no desire in the world to pain you. But you can see how ill she is. She is a broken thing that needs rest and time and peace. You really don't understand. Yes, she is pale and ill. She can be anything and I wouldn't care. She's beautiful. So what? What does anything matter? Why did she try to stab you? We argued. I'm a jealous man and she talks to people just to see the sweat start on my forehead. Oh, you look like you're going to cry. Cheer up. I don't want you to be sad. Tell me this. Do you wear a cross, Prince? Yes. So do I. One that my mother blessed. Take off your cross, and I will take off mine. And we will swap them. That is the good old Russian custom, isn't it? Then we will be as brothers. We shall be as brothers. There's the station. Leave your driver with me. I'll pay him. You get the train to Moscow. It'll be much quicker. I, I, I would rather go back in my carriage. The train is better. Why do you look so angry? What do you want me to confess? That I'm scared that unless I see you board the train, I won't believe you've actually gone. That I'm scared you'll sneak back to her and whisper more of your poisonous little pieties. Whisper them so well she'll go with you. Do you think I'm ashamed to tell you that I don't trust you? Well, I'm afraid to take the train... That is the truth. Afraid? What can someone like you be afraid of? When I came up to Moscow from Petersburg, I had this thought, this idea that someone was watching me. Someone with dark eyes was staring at me from the corner of the carriage. It made me feel ill. I knew it was all my imagination. Nevertheless, even thinking of it makes me very fearful. I'm a weak man. I know how much thoughts can prey upon the mind. They, they, they prey upon mine. Thoughts... Are you ill? I don't understand what you're saying. Perhaps it's true that I cannot help you or her, but I must try, mustn't I? Mustn't I? You're always giving advice. It's time you heard some. Get back to Petersburg. Get yourself some other thing to do than bother us. Prince, all this will prove the ruin of you. I will get the driver to take you the last few hundred yards to the station. You will get on the train and go home. Agreed? Agreed. Your arm, Parthian. Driver! No, I, I'm not drunk. Ill? You ill, sir? I must get to Petersburg. Uh, this is Moscow, sir, not Petersburg. Moscow train Petersburg. station. You're in Moscow train station and the ticket must be... What are we to do? He wants to go to Petersburg. This man is a friend of mine. A friend of yours? He's my friend, I tell you. I was with him only an hour ago. 
Prince, it's me. Prince, this gentleman is under our protection. I'm telling you now, you're not getting your hands on this poor gentleman, nor on his wallet neither. Another time I make you swallow those words and your teeth with them. As it is, get me two tickets to Petersburg, first class, and here is 50 rubles for your trouble. Thank God you were there. Yes. Sometimes even a devil does a good deed by accident. I followed you. I was there because I didn't trust. I was checking up on you. And we won't talk of that. We won't talk of anything. Rest. I'd been standing at the ticket office a good while. I'd been standing thinking I must buy a ticket, but it was all so complicated. I thought I must reach into my pocket for the money. I must use my hand to reach into my pocket. I looked at my hand, I looked at it, and the word hand came to me. I knew it was my hand. I knew what hands were for. Shall I fetch and a blanket? There must be blankets on this tray. It, it seemed strange to think that by an effort of will I could move this object, this hand, but that I could not move, say, the handle of the door by an effort of will. One thing was animate, one thing was not. Are you listening? One thing was animate. Can I feel your forehead? Yes, but you must be careful how you touch me. I am explosive. I could fly apart and the least provocation. I will be good. You're a good boy. Uh, it isn't a fever. I feel so lost. And you wonder sometimes if this world is real. No. All our perceptions are like the flimsiest piece of paper. And through that paper one can see something. One can see something moving the shadow of something and your whole being is suffused with red. It will break through. This monstrous something, it will break through. And what will survive after its terrible manifestation will not be you. Are you going to have a fit? Is that it? And then, just at that moment of greatest fear, clarity comes. Total, as though one had lived all one's life at half power in eclipse to find suddenly that all the veils are lifted, all the doubt is gone, and there, at the heart of everything, this light that is not like light. It is not like light. No, it's, it's not. God. Keep talking, Prince. Look at me. Look at me. No. No. I have no money. Leave me be. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. My name is Ragozhin. You've heard of me? You've heard of me. And you're Ganya's little brother, aren't you? I am, in fact, three inches taller than he is. And this is the Yapanchin house. What were you doing at the Yapanchin's house? What were you doing there? You can't bully me. You think not. Well, I'm glad I found you. I was going to call on them, but I'm not really the kind of man who can call on decent, respectable people, am I? You have news of the Prince? Well, for that, I forgive you everything. Tell me how he is. Is he going to come back and stay in our house? He's back in Petersburg. I brought him back. I don't know what to say to you. What I should tell you, you being only a boy. I know all about Nastasia Filipovna. I know you're another one of her admirers. You, Ganya, the Prince. Quite a triumvirate. Be very careful of how you speak of her to me. Where is the Prince? You haven't harmed him, have you? He has been ill these last two days. I have made arrangements for him. He's being looked after. I came here. I was going to tell them what happened, but I think the Prince may not want people to know he has had a fit. Not his society friends. Now that I've run into you, you can make that decision. Or Ganya can. You're a smart boy, worming your way in with the people who threw your brother out of his job. It's not like that. I'm not going to explain to you. The Yepanchins are nice people, the mother especially. But what would someone like you know about that? Nothing. I will take you to see the prince. Come. I'm not going anywhere with you. You can tell me where he is and I'll make my own way there. This is not where I expected to find you. Well, he's actually been very kind. Lebedev? Hmm. Ragozhi must be paying him a fortune. Oh, I don't like to think of you being here. What do they feed you on, for instance? Oh, a lot of nice soup. 
And bread? Now, don't worry about me. T tell me about yourself. You look a bit... Well, older, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I'll give you my news. Varia, once Ganya's wedding to that woman was off. Speak gently of Nastasia for my sake, if not for pity's sake. I said nothing about her. But what a man thinks is his own business. And God's. I'm an atheist. <laughs> to continue, Varia, once all that was out of the way, got herself married. That is good news. Married to the first fool who asked her. A moneylender, if you like. And how is Ganya? Ganya is out of work. Jemal Yapanchin was very angry with him for not marrying Nastasia Filipovna, so he lost his job. Did you give her back Ganya's money? The money she tormented with him in the night of the party? I gave her back the money. I thought well of him for doing that, throwing it back in her face. Mind you, he curses himself for having done it now. <sighs> oh, I am sick of people. What is wrong, Kolya? My father was in the debtor's prison, if you must know. He signed a positive blizzard of IOUs, and then they all came looking for their money. What could we do but ask Varya's husband for help? He was not pleased to be asked for money, not at all. He made us wait and wait. Important to teach a drunken wretch a lesson. Oh, Kolya. Those were his exact words. Your poor father. I didn't desert him while he was inside. You needn't think that. Well, of course I don't think that. They got quite friendly with me in there. Used to let me sleep over as long as I brought my own blanket. But he is out now? He's out. If there are any difficulties in the future, come to me. Anyway, that's all my news. What have you been doing with yourself aside from chasing after her and making yourself ill? Nothing. I've done nothing except, as you said, I have made myself ill. Is there nothing I can do for you, Collier? You could do me a favour. A serious one. Yeah. You could try and talk a little scent into my father. You could keep a bit of an eye on him when you're better yourself. I have an idea. This is a large house. I will ask Lebedev to take your father in for a week or two. We will convalesce together. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It will be such a weight off my mind. The fact is, I haven't been to school in weeks, and my exams this summer are rather important. What's it like, having a fit? Like fainting? No. Sorry. I could bear the fits. I could bear with them. It's just that I'm afraid that one day I will not get back into my body. Not properly. It's like having a great fire in one's mind, or in one's brain, rather. I'm afraid that one day there will be such a conflagration that I will be swept away. I will be burnt down to nothing. I will be left just sitting in the ashes. An idiot, without reprieve and without hope. That is my fear. That won't happen. What you need is a bit of sense, and if you haven't got much, you should listen to those that have. Me, for instance. Oh, a thousand apologies. Distinguished guests come to ask after your worship's health. We are trying oh. to have a private conversation. Look at him. And we were told he was on his deathbed. Sorry to disappoint you. Miss Aglaya, this is particularly kind of you. Oh, not at all. Is he married? Is he married to that woman? No. Is he quite sane? Uh -oh. Mother. My dear friends, the sight of your kind faces is enough to restore me to complete health. Come into my arms! Come into my arms, Prince Arthur! What a restoration! Who in the world is this? My father. Yes, yeah, the boy I dandled in my arms. Is he indisposed? Eh? Sir! Is this any condition in which to visit an invalid? Madam. You should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, Come, sir. What you need to do is to lie down. Do. What would your poor wife say if she could see you in this state? I, I will be back in a moment, uh, Prince. Kolya, yeah, could you take his other arm? You'd better go and help her, Kolya. Well, I hardly had a chance to talk to you before all these people no, arrived. We will talk later. Oh, all right. I don't know what to say to you. You always have such an earnest look, and today you look sad as well. I'm sure to say something frivolous. It would be nice if you did. Tell me how your sisters are. 
Um, Alexandra has formed an attachment, to use that stupid phrase, with a young man called Radomsky, which is a relief to my mother with three great-grown girls in the house. Of course, it's all we are good for, to be married off. Oh, and the best of it all, of course, is that he is rich. Well, it's not a crime to be rich. Yes, it is. At least I would have supposed you would think so. I've hardly asked how you are. Poor Collier asked me that before, and I'm afraid I gave him a very gloomy answer. I'm always a little dejected after a fit. Perhaps you should not have gone to Moscow. Have you ever felt that if you spoke to someone directly from your heart that they must understand you? I spoke to them both, but what did it achieve? I may well have made matters worse. Perhaps I should go back to Switzerland. I have a friend there who runs a little village school in the mountains. He might find a little work for me. You mustn't leave us. We are your family. I'm full of weakness and self-pity. How long do you intend to stay in this place with these people? Lebedev is not a bad man. He's not a good man, either. He likes to make mischief, primarily because he likes to see what will happen. He thinks of himself as stirring a stick in an ant's nest. I've spoken to him about that. Each one of us is a person, unique and precious. Though I know that is a cliché. I'm glad it is one. Some things need to be repeated again and again in order for us to first hear and then perhaps to believe them. <laughs> You're smiling at me. I think of you as a quiet kind of man and yet every time I see you, you begin on one of these long speeches about life and people and so on. I like it. It's because my spirits are lifting, thanks to you. Prince, come quickly, now. What's happened? See, you have another visitor. Prince, what a popular chap you are. Aglaya, go and sit inside. No. Do you know who it is? I do. Lebedev, did you ask her here? <laughs> Dear Lady Descend, here are a host of old and new acquaintances. Good afternoon. Nastasia Filipovna. Allow me to introduce... Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, no, I won't get out, Lebedev. I'm quite comfortable as I am. You need a haircut, Prince. Mrs. Yapanchin, we've never been introduced. Nevertheless, may I take the liberty of speaking to you? Oh. I am Nastasia Filipovna. Of course, you must have heard of me. Really, really Prince? Excellent. Well, I have heard that your daughter, your daughter Alexandra, hopes to marry a Mr. Radomsky. Oh. Is that correct? I know he gives the appearance of being a rich man, but he is, in fact... Horribly in debt. Oh. <laughs> As a favour, I could ask Rogozhin to buy up his IOUs, if you like. Would you like me to do that? I'm afraid I don't understand a word you're saying. I also speak French and German, if that would be a help. <laughs> <laughs> you're back in Petersburg? Yes. Where are you living? With Rogozhin? Yes. So I would advise against you making a social call. <laughs> I heard you were ill. I came to see you, but you have so many friends. Darling people, I'm very, very busy at the moment. I can't stay, but thank you for your warm welcome. Oh, I will leave it to another occasion to express my full thanks to you all. Especially you, Lebedev. <laughs> Driver? This is the final straw. You brought Nastasia here, didn't you, Lebedev? <laughs> you were hoping for a scene. <laughs> it's not a good idea for you to get suspicious. That's how a lot of the real loonies start. Afraid to eat their soup for fear of poison. Oh, brace up, Prince. Just a little harmless fun. And never mind, Miss Aglaya. You needn't worry about the Prince here. He's free of Nastasia now. She's made her choice, so you are free to make your move. I'd get going, though, miss, if you want my advice. He's a bit more elusive than he should be, the prince. How dare you talk to me like that? I am a man of courage. Prince, will you say nothing? <laughs> I will say something. We are leaving immediately, immediately. We came here in a spirit of compassion and have been grossly abused. Aglaya? I am happy to leave. 
In fact, if you do not call for the carriage immediately, Mother, I will simply start to walk back to Petersburg. No, no, M Mrs. Japanchin, please don't leave like this. Look, I, I am sincerely sorry. Did you have to it's stand there to... with your mouth open I like did... a total ninny? Are you so moonstruck no, I, I'm, by her? I'm very sorry. I see I... now. It is more than pity you feel for her. Do you deny it? No, no, don't deny it. I came here to see you. I defended you to everyone. Now, now, if I were a man, I think I would hit you. Please get out of our way, if you please. You are very quiet, Prince. Have a cigarette. You'll clear your head. You feeling ill again? No. After the fit, for some time, you feel at peace. Not perhaps in a nice way but as though one's soul and one's body was muffled. I was in a little cocoon until yesterday. Having all those visitors woke me up. I'm halfway back to the world now. So you emerge like a butterfly, or maybe a homely moth. Well, Prince, let me warn you to beware of bright lights. They will dazzle, and then they will burn you. I'm not a butterfly. I'm nothing new. I'm the same man I was before. Sometimes I long to be transformed. Have a cigarette. I'm not, Collier. All this philosophical stuff is wasted on me. What a good boy he is. He's young, that's all. You mistake ignorance for innocence. Now you are being philosophical. For me to be straightforward is very hard. I have the soul of a corkscrew, though I do not drink like my poor old father. Let me be straightforward. And you, Prince, you are to answer honestly. Will you? Of course I will. Of course you will. What a thing to say. But you can say it, can't you? What is it you wish to know? Simply this. Nastasia Filipovna has made it clear that she will not marry you. Is that the case? At the moment, yes, that is the case. She's a very proud woman. All those who have been crushed and rise up can outdo Satan in their pride. She's living openly in his house. You should be more careful, Prince. Collier tells me that you have exchanged crosses with that animal. Do you seriously think that will protect you from his jealousy? What do you want to speak to me about? I have abandoned all hopes of Nastasia. I am thinking of another woman. Can you guess whom? Miss Aglaya. What did you say? Speak out. Miss Aglaya. Indeed. So, very simply put, are you in love with her? I regard myself as her friend and brother. Hmm. She was very angry after the visit yesterday. Lebedev told me what she said to you before she left. She was angry. Did you write to her to explain, to apologize? I thought of it, but no, I did not write to her. <laughs> it is ridiculous that such a man as you is my rival at every hand's turn. I do not consider us to be rivals, Ganya. The instant I heard what happened, I wrote to her. It seemed an excellent opportunity to ingratiate myself with her. Perhaps it was a little contemptible to write about you in the way I did. I put the worst gloss on your behaviour I could, especially with regard to Nastasia. And all the while posing as your dear, concerned friend. Her reply was very interesting. You were surprised that she replied to me? And so quickly? You were thinking of the last letter I wrote to her before all this. The one you read aloud to her. The one you both laughed over. Nobody laughed, Ganya. You know this. I had thought we were friends now. Would you like to read her letter to me? No. No, it wasn't all bad. She said that probably you couldn't help yourself. That you were trying to act the part of the holy fool when anyone could see that really you were just an idiot, a freak of nature, beneath contempt but not entirely beyond pity. She wrote that? About me? Does it hurt you? The words are very wounding. 
Oh, well, she's just a foolish, self-indulgent, vain little girl with her nose out of joint because of Nastasia Filipovna. Miss Aglaya is a very pretty thing, but in comparison with Nastasia's beauty. The women take those things so much to heart. She is jealous. Now is the ideal time for me to make my move. I don't think you will ever have much success with Aglaya, Ganya. That, that is my honest opinion. She is attracted to me. I know that. Perhaps that is true. <laughs> Look, all I'm asking for is a clear field with this one, eh, Prince? I'm not saying my motives in writing to her were very kind. In fact, they were mean. They were very mean. I'm sorry, Prince. I seem to spend most of our conversations apologizing to you. Why is that? I've told you already that we are not rivals. I know what you think. You think she is interested in you, and all these disdainful words are only a smokescreen. But it's just pity she feels for you. Pity for a broken-down wreck of a man that no woman could love. Really love. She's not exactly sure what she feels about me at the moment. Is that the truth? I would not like you to be hurt, to be disappointed. You do not have the temperament to deal well with disappointment. Which is a pity, as I have so much to contend with. You are not being honest with me. I have told you everything. But you are hiding something, aren't you? I know that Aglaya, Miss Aglaya, has written to you. She has, hasn't she? She did write to me. Is that why you came to see me? To find out what was in her letter? I have no right to ask you what was in it. No right, and yet I demand that you tell me. Or I beg you. Whichever works. It was very short. Just a note, really. Asking me to meet her on the green bench in front of the bandstand at the Pavlovs' gardens. Eight o'clock in the morning on Friday. She asked you for an assignation? An assignation? No. I am her friend. Nothing more. Oh, don't be a simpleton. And don't expect me to be a simpleton. So will you go? Will you go, clutching a fistful of flowers and a tear-stained poem? I will go. Tell me if you love her, Prince. Tell me. I am a sick man, a broken-down wreck. Answer me. It is hard to answer. I find it hard to believe. I didn't know until yesterday. She was talking to me, and I felt suddenly this hope, this elation. It was a shock. Yes, I love her. I do believe I really love her. Damnation! That was episode two of The Idiot by Dostoevsky. Dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray. Prince Mishkin was played by Paul Rees. Rogozhin by Roger Allam. Ganya by Alex Jennings, Nastasia by Leah Williams, General Yapanchin by David Swift, and General Evolgin by Stephen Moore. Lebedev was played by Gerard McDermott, Mrs. Yapanchin by Paula Jacobs, Aglaya by Tracy Ann Oberman, Kolya by Carl Prekop, Alexandra by Gemma Churchill, and Totsky by Martin Heider. The Idiot was directed by Cherry Cookson. The Idiot by Dostoevsky Dramatized for radio in four episodes by Melissa Murray With Paul Rees as Prince Mishkin Alex Jennings as Ganya Roger Allam as Rogozhin Leah Williams as Nastasia David Swift as General Yapanchin Paula Jacobs as Mrs. Yapanchin and Stephen Moore as General Evolgin Episode 3 
seems a shame to wake him. Prince. Prince. Do you expect me to bend down and kiss you awake like a fairy story? Hmm. It's you. Yes, it's me. I was to meet you here, wasn't I? Then I fell asleep. How rude. That I asked you to meet me? No, no, not that. I'm teasing you. Oh, I had such bad dreams, such complicated, cruel dreams. Who are you dreaming of? Just now. That made you start, didn't it? I know very well who it is. What's she like, this Nastasia Filipovna? As though I want to know. Fascinating creature. How banal to be a fascinating creature. I'm not fascinating. You're supposed to contradict me. And don't be angry, Aglaya. Don't be... Look, I, I don't mean the word jealous, but I can't think of the right one. You think I'm jealous of no, her? No, no, look, I, I'm sorry. Please, we mustn't quarrel. Why not? Actually, I am jealous of her, but not for the reasons you imagine. Well, of course not. And what reasons are those? Well, I, 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 well, I don't know what to say. Enough! It's time we talk seriously. You may be surprised that I have chosen to confide in you. I'm honoured. I remember the first morning we met. You'd just come all the way from Switzerland that very morning. How long had you been there? Four years. I came back full of confidence, sure that I would stay well. I've wanted to say this a long time. You are ill, physically ill, and perhaps sometimes mentally unhappy. I don't say this to pain you. Thank you. I know nothing of what it must be like to be an epileptic. Despite it, or because of it, God knows, you are the most honest and most truthful man I have ever met. I have the highest respect for you, for, for your integrity. Well? All I can say is that your opinion, your, your opinion of me is more important. You're so kind. I feel very often unfit for life. That I don't understand the simplest things, that I'm always on the outside of everything. I have decided that I must run away from home. I must leave home, and that you... I have chosen you to help me. Run away from home? I've been wanting to go for a long time, since I was 14. I've been shut up in that house all my life. I've... I've been nowhere, seen nothing. Do you think I'm good for nothing but marrying? That's all there is? No, I refuse. I, I will go to Europe, to Paris. I will study and then I will become a teacher. I don't want to be a general's daughter, a, a wife to someone. Is it so arrogant of me to want to be of use in the world? No. You will help me. You will be my guide. I've thought about it. You talked once about going back to Switzerland to teach children. We could teach them together. Oh, Aglaya, listen to me. If you refuse to help me, I will marry Ganya. Or perhaps I will do as Miss Nastasia has done. Be a loose woman, have lovers. There's an option. And you like her. I know how she lives. I'm not as innocent as they think me. If you know her story, then you must pity her. Must I? I don't know that I do. It's not an easy matter to talk of, but... When she was a child, an orphan, the man who should have protected her, betrayed her. I don't want to talk about her. I want to talk about me, about us. Will you help me escape? Why did you think I asked to see you? Did you think I was in love with you and that this was to be a romantic assignation? Perhaps I was a little afraid of that. Perhaps I hoped. If you do not help me escape, do you know what I will do? I will marry Ganya. Not just because it would infuriate my entire family, but also because I find him very attractive. Physically attractive. There, there is something about his mouth and his hands. I love his hands. Oh, Aglaya, you will never marry Ganya. Is it true that you propose marriage to her? Yes, it is true. You must love her very much. No. What I feel for her is... anguish. She's so driven. 
Her only pleasure is in her continual sense of shame. She revels in it. It's an act of revenge, but no one is wounded except herself and that unfortunate soul, Dragoshin. He's the one she's living with, isn't it? I tried to speak with her. Oh, men love to preach at us. I couldn't find the words to say to her. Everything I did say offended her, patronized her. I failed with Nastasia. Do you know she has taken to writing letters to me? L letters to you? But Yes, I'll... she writes to me. She tells me how much she envies my sweet innocence, my lovely, carefree life. She adores me from afar. I know how she adores me. Like a pretty doll she would like to tear to pieces. She says the happiest day of her life will be on our wedding day. Our wedding day? Is that so impossible to imagine? It might have happened that you and I fell in love. It could have happened. Prince, I am so unhappy. What can I do? You would have married her. She has refused me. Only because she thinks you don't love her. Convince her that you do and she'd marry you. She'd marry you without a moment's hesitation. Have you told her that you love her? I would gladly give my life to restore her peace of mind, to make her happy. But I cannot pretend to love her. And that, would, that would be infamous. It would be infamous to say that I loved her when I do not. Not in that way. Perhaps I'm not capable of that kind of love. That's ridiculous. No, it is not. Well, just lie to her. People, normal people, do it all the time. People lie about love or, or are silent when they should speak. It would be best for everyone if you were to go to her and lie. You must be prepared to make sacrifices. Not all the things we must do in this world are pleasant and agreeable. Not all of them make us glow with self-righteousness. You do not understand how proud she is. Or how vain you are of your virtue, your goodness. Is that what you think of me? You've gone very pale. I am not fit to be any woman's husband. Only with Nastasia, <gasps> her situation was and is so desperate, so desperate... That marriage, even to you, were preferable. If I am wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Here, here is her last letter to me. Take it and read it. Read them all. I will marry Ganya. I will marry him. I long for our wedding night. L let, let us walk. <laughs> let us walk among the trees and calm ourselves. Oh, no, Aglaya, if only I could tell you... I am a bigger fool than you, Prince. But you will see. I at least will outgrow my folly. In five years, you will not recognize me. I will be like everyone else. No one can save me from that. It seems no. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. I'm leaving. Here are our letters. Let me help you. Collier, what are you doing here? Being a nasty mixture of a spy and a nursemaid. Her mother, Mrs. Yapanchin, who may be ridiculous but is a good woman, asked me to keep an eye on her. On Miss Aglaya. Whew, plenty of stormy scenes at home at the moment. Threats, broken china, slammed doors, dresses being thrown out of windows. She is very unhappy. Well, that's not a unique achievement, is it? It's enough to make one a misogynist. If you're an old man and ugly and drunk, no one gives a damn. But if you're a pretty young girl... Come on, I'm under instructions. Mrs. Yapanchin thought she might be going to meet you. She wants a word. Lots of words, probably, and plenty of wet handkerchiefs. She's a great one for crying, our Mrs. Yapanchin. Come on. Our last meeting was not a happy one. I must thank you for coming. Uh, are you ill, Mrs. Yapanchin? I'm quite well. Your voice? My voice. Hmm. My voice is the condition of modern Russia. I am afraid to speak. I am afraid to speak in my own house. I have to hide away here in the morning room like an assassin in order to have a conversation. I am afraid, sir, of my own daughter. What did she say to you? I cannot tell you all of the things we talked of, Mrs. Yupanchin. Have you and her... Have you come to an understanding? No. No. In fact, we quarrelled. May I speak frankly? 
You are not an ordinary man, not by any means. And for that I love you, as your friend, as your relative, but as Aglaia's mother... No, you needn't say more. There's no need, I assure you. There's no need. I would not dream. How could I dream? I know what I am. You must forgive me, I will go. You are not still staying at that creature Lebedev's house, are you? I will ask my husband to find you an apartment. No. Say nothing, please. Come and see me again soon. I will. Very soon. What in the name of God are you up to? What? First you go running halfway across Russia after that Nastasia woman, and now you're after Miss Aglaya. Can you hear her playing the piano? She'll break the keys. I hate her. I am not after Miss Aglaya, and you shouldn't speak of her like that. Well, what do I care? What do I care about any of them? I tell you what will happen with her, with Miss Aglaya. She'll squirm and whine for a while, but in the end she'll do what's expected of her. She'll marry some idiot. Not like you. Someone ordinary. And that's what most of us come to. I'll get a job in the civil service and drink vodka at the weekend. What's wrong, Kolya? I just got a nasty note from Lebedev. He wants you to come immediately. It's something to do with my father. He says my father has disgraced himself and that he's run away. Are you coming? Can you tear yourself away from all these women? I'm coming. Prince, for your sake, I welcome this young man's father, this so-called General Ivorkin, into what my house. What do you mean, so-called? Be quiet, Kolya. Welcomed him into my house. And for this act of charity, how am I repaid? How am I recompensed? Kolya, I think you should go. My father has disappeared. He says my father has disappeared. Where has he gone, you villain? Kolya, leave the matter in my hands. You must trust me and leave. Oh. I am sorry about this business. I actually am. I like the boy. Still, the fact is... I am not a rich man. Four hundred roubles is a lot of money to me. Four hundred roubles of my money has gone missing. Three months' wages. What do you say to that? What is your princely opinion of that? It is a lot of money. Four hundred roubles goes missing. And at the same moment, one drunk old soldier goes missing. Would you surmise a connection, Prince, between the two events? My job. My humble little job I resigned weeks ago, when you came to live here. Mr. Agorjin insisted that you have someone looking out for you full-time, 24 hours a day, looking out for you and reporting back to him. I didn't know that. I was specifically told not to tell you. I, I, I don't know that I like the idea of someone reporting back on me. He has to keep tabs on you, doesn't he? Can't have you floating about like a loose cannon. And there's always the chance that Nastasia might take it into her head to marry you after all. And don't suggest that you might move somewhere else. Because that would take away my only source of income. Could you do that to me? I've nothing. No one. Orphaned. And now my money's gone. Have you honestly lost 400 rubles? Lost? I don't think I said lost them. I don't lose money. I lose my temper. I lose my peace of mind. I lose my self-respect. But I do not lose money. If this is a game, it is a very cruel one. I have been robbed. I went to bed last night, the money was in my overcoat pocket, and this morning I woke up and it was gone. Were you drunk when you went to bed last night? Yes, of course I was drunk. That has nothing to do with it. But perhaps you put it in a drawer, the money, or, or it fell out of your pocket. Ha ha have you looked everywhere? I have searched every nook and cranny. I have searched the maid down to her shift. Nothing. The money is gone. The money is stolen. It is a terrible accusation. It is a terrible situation. What am I to do, Prince? Where is the general now? I don't know. Why do you keep talking about him? I am the victim. You should want to help me. How can I help you? We are both generous men, you and I. But you see where my generosity has taken me, Prince? You mustn't tell anyone about this, especially Kolya. I will help you if I have your word on that. And what does this help of yours consist of? I will give you the 400 roubles. You will give me the 400 roubles. How generous. Do I look like a beggar? I am asking you a sincere question, sir. Do I look like a beggar? No, not, not in the least. Perhaps I, I phrased my offer a little crudely. 
I meant, of course, to say that I would undertake to return the 400 roubles that have gone astray. That have been stolen. We will not quarrel about that. No, this noble, this inestimable prince will decide if I can quarrel or not. I am an independent man, sir, a proud man. Will you really give me the money? Yes. Find the old general first, and then we'll talk terms. I'll be back here by nightfall. I want to confront the old sinner. Well, what did the nasty toad say? Nothing. You're a terrible liar. You know that. Besides, you've gone as white as a sheet. I want you to find your father. Just find him. Don't ask him anything. Don't listen to anything he says. Give him some soup and put him to bed. Has he done something disgraceful? We will look into the matter tomorrow. Your father must have rest. Have, have a night's sleep. I will meet you here tomorrow morning without fail at eight o'clock. But... No, Collier, please, don't ask me anything else. You're right, I'm tired. Just do as I ask. Very well, Prince. What are you going to do? I'm going to sit quietly for a minute. I didn't mean those things I said about Miss Aglaya. If you like her. Do you? Oh, yes. Listen to me. She won't take any notice of her parents. I mean, in the end, she will get what she wants. I am no prospect for her, Collier. I tell you that without self-pity. It's true that when I look at her, all kinds of dreams and fancies come to me. But I, above all other men, value the distinction between what is real and what is delusion. You are very hard on yourself, dear Prince. Make sure you eat today. You look too thin. Will I read Nastasia's letters to her? I should. Though I doubt it will comfort me. Dear Miss Aglaya, it might be considered an offence against decency for me to write to you. But I'm so far beneath you that I could not offend you even if I desired to. Such terrible pride, Nastasia. Where will it lead you to? Do you want to know how I live? I walk about in diamonds and lace, surrounded by rogues and drunkards. That's as it should be. The house I live in is dark and gloomy, and there is a secret in it. Ragorjin keeps a knife wrapped round with silk thread in the drawer. Why does he do that? He likes the fact that I know it is there, though we never speak of it. He loves me. So much, he cannot help hating me. I knew before the prince knew that he loved you. <laughs> Who could fail to love you? Perhaps his offer to marry me has annoyed you. No, you cannot be annoyed. You are an angel, an understanding angel, suffused with the most miraculous pity. <gasps> Perhaps you pity me. I hope you pity me. The prince never loved me. You know this. But you two must be married. That is all I live for. On the day after you are married, I will marry Ragorjin. I swear it before the saints. I will become a respectable woman. But until that day, until your wedding day, I will remain a whore and a slut. If you marry the prince, I am saved. If you do not, I will live as I live now, in sin and debauchery. You hold my life in your white, white hands, Miss Aglaya. Oh, Nastasia. Hello? Is that you? What are you doing here? I thought you were out looking for the general. I thought you had promised to help me. Have you been sitting here all day? Do you know what time it is? Do I know what time it is? No, but I can see that it's evening. 
Have you found the general? Have you found my money? No. Have you just sat here all day? All day, but now I must go. To find him? No, to find her. I have to speak to her. I have to tell her what's in my heart. Who, Mr. Glyer? If Collier returns, take a message. I must speak with the general before you do. Must you? Obey me in this. Tell me what you are planning to say to Mr. Glyer. Tell me. No! It's more than my job is worth, sir. No, I, qu I quite understand. I, d I didn't realise the time. I walked here. Quarter to midnight. The ladies are all asleep, sir, and the, the master isn't even in the house. I, I might venture to wake him, sir, if it was an emergency, but he isn't here. You see my predicament. No, I, I will call again in the morning. You needn't mention my visit to Miss Aglaya, or indeed to anyone. <sighs> They will think it very eccentric, me coming here at this time of the night. I have to tell them, sir. Quite. We met before, didn't we? On my first day in Petersburg. What a long time ago that seems. When I was in Switzerland, I was so homesick, I used to talk to myself just to hear Russian words. <laughs> I felt so well then. I thought I would find a new, useful life waiting for me here. But nothing I've done seems to have worked in the way I intended. Either I or the world is colour-blind. Except, of course, I don't mean colour. I, me I mean something else. Some other element. Am I talking nonsense? We all talk a little nonsense at night. <sighs> we might have been friends, you and I. That's the pity of it. I'm going home. I'm going somewhere. Well, good night, then. Good night, sir. I behave exactly like a clown. I wish I was on a mountain and could breathe air. It's me. It's me. I'm not an apparition. And if I was dead, I'd hope you would greet my poor ghost kindly. Nastasia, what are you doing here at this time of night? I am a witness to your impending bliss. Let me kiss your hands. What are you doing? Oh, get up. For, for God's sake, get up. Are you worried about my dignity? I have none. If you're worried about my dress, well, I do not pay for my own clothes, dear Prince. You know that. But tell me this. Tell me this one thing. You have been with her, the beautiful Miss Aglaya in the bosom of her family, all this evening. Did you talk? Did she play music for you? Did you speak tenderly to her? All of those things? All of them? Are you happy? Are you quite delirious with happiness answer me grant me one word from those tender lips you have a mouth like a woman's Nastasia please get up come on get up and we can talk we have nothing to talk about goodbye no, wait Nastasia please easy does it easy does it Rogoshin let her be she's all right there's a carriage waiting for her around the corner and don't worry about the future, any embarrassing incidents. I told her today, no more letters to your lady friend. I put it to her bluntly. She wanted to see you one last time, and I granted that because I am a generous man. What did you think of them, by the way, her letters? She writes well, doesn't she? I laugh when I read that bit about me and the knife. Which is true, by the way, in case you think she's mad. She's not mad. No more than I am. You read those letters. You haven't a clue about anything. Well, I'm off home to my bed. To her bed. My little bird fluttered back to me in the end. You didn't answer her question. Which question? Are you happy or not? No. No, I'm not. I didn't think you would be. 
Oh, well, if it isn't my dear sister come to call at the old family home. Oh. This is a very early morning visit. So early, in fact, that I haven't managed to find my way to bed yet. It's seven o'clock in the morning, Ganya. You're disgusting. Oh. God, isn't it enough to have a drunk for a father without having a brother who won't work? Do you know what my husband Do says? Do not mention your husband. I ate oysters last night and I'm not feeling the better for it. <laughs> I'm glad you're awake. Listen, I have news. Have you heard? Heard what? About Miss Aglaia and the prince. No, tell me. It seems they are in love and probably about to be engaged. Definitely. Her sister's told my dressmaker, who is also their dressmaker. I thought you would want to know. So, well, that's that. That's the end of it. I'm glad to see you so philosophical. I have been doing my best to get friendly with the Yapanchin girls, for your sake. I think Aglaia the worst of them, frankly. Wayward and vain. I never thought she would make you happy. Neither did I. But I did want to marry her. And not altogether for the money. It is all over peace with the rest of my life. I was born with an ambitious soul. I am a clever man, of course. But I would prefer to be a genius. I am infected with the desire to be bold and original. They're engaged. As good as. Well, I have to go. I'm to meet the prince at Lebedev's this morning by a happy coincidence. Some new disgrace involving our dear father, apparently. Why I have to go, I don't know. Collier insists. I will be able to see the blushing bridegroom for myself. The man is a joke. And she is a bitch. Oh, poor Ganya. I do feel sorry for you. You have had very bad luck. To lose both of them. Nastasia to Rogorshin and now Aglaia to the prince. One a semi-criminal and the other a semi-invalid. That's salt in the wound. Do you gloat? Or do you sympathise? Both. Both. Well, I'd better go and see what this nonsense with father is all about. Behold the prodigal father. Sorry we're late. Never again will I, sir, step foot within this house. Isn't the prince here yet? Evidently not. But here are father's possessions, tied up in an old rug. Lebedev kindly passed them through the window to me. He point-blank refuses to open the door of his house to any member of my family. So you won't have to step foot in the house, father. You can join me here, on the veranda. A bundle? What am I to do with a bundle? Am I a beggar? Am I a dog? Does a dog receive decorations from the very hand of the Tsar himself? For gallantry? For bravery? For heroism? Oh, sit down in the chair and take a nap. There's a good fellow. Oh, I myself have a headache this morning. Don't provoke him. He's our father. Don't provoke him. Oh, that is marvellous. Do you know what this paragon of paternity has been up to, do you? Do you know why he has embarked on such an orgy of drunkenness? To drown his shame, that's why. And as a hint for you, Collier, it must be something particularly rich to turn the stomach of a man like Lebedev. Very stimulating to receive a moral lecture from a man like that, I can assure you. Atheist! Who is an atheist? Lebedev? Me? You? Don't answer! For the love of heaven, don't answer! Let us just sit here like three foolish virgins and wait for the prince to come. Why exactly are we waiting for him to come, by the way? Are we incapable of dealing with our own affairs? Must that imbecile slip his nice white nose into everything? It's not like him to be late. What do you think he could have been taken ill again? <sighs> Come out, you degenerate! Come out and make your accusations! We're all here! I curse this house and all its occupants! I will stand in the roadway and shake its dust from my sandals. In the first place, you're wearing boots, not sandals. And in the second, you're going nowhere. And who, sir, will prevent me? A man who withstood three Cossack charges with nothing but a broken blade in his hand. The odd thing is, as far as I've heard, he actually was quite a decent soldier. Brave, but not that bright. I must be an aberration. Every family has one. You are not an aberration. You're just a horrible person. But I am neither a liar nor a thief. 
Why did you say that? Who is a thief or a liar? Let me give you a bit of advice. People are disappointing. They truly are. You hero worship this prince, but I know he is destined to let you down. You think the most ridiculous things about him. And when you realize the truth, it will break your faith in everything. Shut up! You really like him, don't you? As a matter of curiosity, why? He is like a blank bit of what? paper. Oh. No, he's more like a mirror. We look at him and hope to see in his bright, shining surface a nice reflection of ourselves. Good morning, General. Where are my 400 rubles? And do you have an answer to that question, Father? Where are Lebedev's 400 rubles? What are you talking about? What is he talking about, Father? <laughs> Those are not tears of remorse. They are tears of self-pity. I recognise each salty drop. He does not regret the theft itself so much as the getting caught. Isn't that the truth? I used to be like this boy here, sitting open-mouthed as you told your stories. To be fair to me, I was younger. A lot younger than he is now. Do you remember the time you told me that when you were a boy you had been Napoleon's page? Do you? I went to school the next day and told everyone. Oh, the humiliation, the derision, the fists and the feet. I have a scar on the side of my head to this day. To steal 400 rubles from that pig of a man. Do you hear me, Lebedev? You are a pig of a man. You probably tempted him with the money. You let him see how easy to steal it would be. Did you lie there with your eyes half shut, pretending to be drunk and watch him? Did you? Have you gone mad, Ganya? Father would never steal. Kolya, my dear son, my precious boy. He used to call me that. You must leave. You must go. Go to your mother. Go to her. I command you. Here is a scene of ignominy and disgrace where vile men will make their vile accusations about a poor, broken-down old man. The accusation is vile, certainly, but is it accurate? He would never steal. Of course, sometimes he is forgetful. Perhaps he picked up the money and forgot to return it. Or maybe it was a joke, a practical joke. What? Have I done to you, Ganya, that you hate me so? Have you any of the money left, or did it all go on drink and gambling debts and... T well, let's spare the boy's blushes. Ganya, you are my son, my own flesh and blood. Judas Iscariot would have had more pity. He mentioned the police. Lebedev did. Of course, he was saying that just to torment me. I, I mean, it would be the end, wouldn't it, of my future, my career prospects, a decent marriage, but what does that matter? What does that matter to you? I swear to you solemnly before God. Give me what money you have left, or would you prefer it if I just went through your pockets if myself? If you touch him, I will kill you. He is a good man. Who knows what he has suffered? More to the point, who cares? The money! Less than a hundred by the look of things. Oh, well, there's nothing for it. I'll have to beg the rest from the brother-in-law. Can you hear me, Lebedev? I will be back with the money, I hope. Kolya? Yes, father. Am I still your father? Oh, let us pretend this day never happened. Let me take you somewhere and get some good hot food into you, mm. and then you can have a nice rest, mm, a good sleep. And Kolya here will tuck you in and sing you a lullaby. You bastard! <laughs> come on, father, we're leaving. <laughs> if the prince had come, none of this would have happened. Excuse me, sir. Mm. You must stamp your feet. Uh, I beg your pardon? You must stamp your feet. Frostbite. It might be spring by the calendar, but it's winter all year round for the homeless, sir. Yes. Stamp your feet. Now, listen to mine. One of them is wood. Fifty kopecks, if you can guess which. The left. I'll have to owe you. Do you have any money? Ten rubles. Oh, I know a good place to get a bottle. I'll, I'll, I'll come back with a change. Leave you my hat, a surety. No, I don't drink. You don't trust me. Here are five rubles. Go on, you, you can have them. Well, thanks for the money. Now, I'll stamp your feet now. God bless you. What exactly are you up to? I'm just curious. I'm not one of those in the police's pocket. If you're thinking of doing that house, don't bother. He's got a revolver, knives, axes, and all sorts in there. 
friendly word. Not that you look like you could burgle a baby. Thank you. You're a foreigner? No. I was away from Russia for a while, in Switzerland. I've been ill. Yeah, I come home to die. Yeah, well, unless you plan to go very sudden, I'd steer shy of him in that house. Will I tell you about him? No, a Parthian Rogoshin is a friend of mine. He got his money off his father. The old fellow died after the most dreadful beating. You could hear the scream six streets away, by all accounts. No, it, it was Parthian's father that beat him. Yeah, either way, he inherited millions. Then he takes up with this wild piece. <laughs> Suppose you know her, too. She is a most unhappy woman. If I was as beautiful as her, I'd be happy. Would you? If your soul was tormented with self-loathing, if you blamed yourself for the sins committed against you? Fond of her, aren't you? Yes. I've seen her more than once. Do you know the odd thing about her? Most beautiful women are at their best in silence, in repose. And when they talk, it's like the illusion is shattered. Not with her, though. When she speaks, it sharpens her beauty. Hers... It's the kind of loveliness that's like a knife. No comfort at all to the man that owns it. Does she have your heart skewered, then? Oh, I am her friend. When she came first to Rogoshin's house, it was all parties and mad escapades. Crowds, drink, all kinds of carry-on. Now, there's just the two of them in there. It's gone all quiet, all broody. What do you suppose goes on in there? Apart from the obvious. Ooh, you've been standing here for hours, haven't you? Mm. Trying to pluck up the courage to go in and rescue her. She doesn't want me to rescue her. I think all she wants is for me to witness. Witness what? What time is it? Nine, ten. I don't exactly own a watch. It's nice to talk to you. No, I, I'm supposed to be somewhere. Where am I supposed to be? I was a teacher once, you know, a, a real one. Oh. I can still remember my Pushkin. Kolya, I forgot about him in general. I have to go. Forgive me. Oh, no, don't go. We'll be home soon. Oh, come on, Father, keep walking. We're only a hundred yards away. How did I think when I was a young man? the pride of my regiment, the beloved of women, that it would come to this, that I would come to this. Vanity! Oh. Vanity! All is vanity! Oh, look where you're going. People are staring at us. Yes, yeah, well, they are staring. They are seeing the mark of shame that is branded upon my forehead. Oh, no. You, sir, yes, you can read what is written on my forehead. Here is a dead man. A disgraced man. A man whose soul is vanquished. Oh, take me to a cemetery and let me lie in peace. Come on, Father, please. You and your mother will come to my grave. <laughs> Little Nina. I called her that long ago. <laughs> what an angel. What a long, suffering angel your mother is, Colla. Don't cry, Father. Excuse me, please. Uh, do you know what is the most extraordinary thing in all my life? It's the time you led the charge with just 16 soldiers against the Prussian guns. The most extraordinary thing in all my life is that you, my son, love me. How am I to account for that? I am disgraceful. I am a sinner. Listen to me, Collier! I am. I am listening. I will tell you the truth. Come closer. What is everyone shouting? No one is shouting. <laughs> oh. My beloved son. What's wrong? Get up. <laughs> Father. <laughs> Call you, what's happened? Go away. Don't let me help you. I'm sorry I wasn't at Lebedia this Father. morning. I should have been there. I know no general. Can you hear me? Oh, drunk, is he? It looks like some kind of fit to me. Maybe he's one of those... What do you call it? Epileptics? No, no, it's not an epileptic fit. Are you a doctor? Make way for the doctor! <laughs> Kolya, let me help you to carry Get him. Get away! Please. This man is not a doctor! He's nothing! He's a fraud! He is a liar and a fraud! Where were you this morning? If you'd have been there, none of this would have happened! I was... Get away! Get away from me! You're too late to help him now! Kolya, 
Polly, I'm more sorry than I can say. Where were you? Let us get your father home and then we can talk. We can't Please. talk. We will never talk again. Will somebody help me for the love of God? I, I will. And you, Prince, you can go to hell. Good afternoon, Prince. You find me all alone and sadly sober. Why don't you sit down? You look very tired, my friend. Have you been overdoing it? Listen. I am inordinately fond of music. You are surprised. You were surprised that such a man, such a squalid little insect, a cockroach, could have any appreciation of the finer things of life. No. You're not surprised? I don't think that much about you. I don't decide in advance what you're likely to do or likely to be. That now is the first hard thing you have said to me. Am I really only a minor character? I don't think I can bear to have that kind of conversation now. I know. Let's talk of something more cheerful. Do you hear these scientists can send an electric current through a dead thing's muscle and it will twitch and move as it did in life? That's hell for you. Dead but going through the motions. Why must we think more of hell than of heaven? Lebedev, I had promised already to give you the money. How could you torment that poor old man? And the oddest thing of all is that I like him. I do, sincerely. I was offended that my 400 rubles went missing, was stolen, I could say that I did it to teach him a lesson. Another time he might have got into real trouble. But it's all excuses. We are cruel simply because we can be. You weren't here to stop me. I relied on you stopping me. And it would have been nicer if someone had stopped Ganya this morning. He was worse than me. Where were you? I was... Yes? I was standing about Ragoshin's house. I stood outside his house and prayed that he and Nastasia would be safe. I'll have to tell him that. Not sure how he liked the idea of being prayed over. I think I will have to leave them to their fate now. Nastasia has made it clear that she has chosen him for good or ill. So, you've decided to go for the blonde one. Miss Aglaya, lovely, fresh, young thing. You should see the look you're giving me. So you love her. How altogether human of you. Well, have you spitting tobacco and drinking vodka next? Maybe. Maybe I will. Maybe it is possible that a man like me could be married. Maybe she will marry me. I could live that kind of life, an ordinary life. I've been an invalid for so long. Good for you, Prince. I stood outside Ragoshin's house and pictured all the details of a rosy future in my mind. And because I was indulging in those delicious daydreams, I was late. I was late, and the poor general... Do you know what has happened? The stroke. Well, of course I know about that. Don't blame yourself, Prince. Blame me or blame Ganya. Kolya is angry with me. He's disappointed in me. And yet I feel I could help him. I want to say to him, do not forget who you are. You're a child. A child. And though it seems as though you're growing up, you're really only growing away, away from the roots of your being. But hold fast to what you are. To be an adult is not so very wonderful. Did you say an adult or an idiot? I will go and find him. I will apologize to him and to his father. I will seize my life. Nastasia will marry Rogoshin. She will. And it may be that she will find peace with him. Do you not think that is possible? No. It may be possible. We must surround them with love. And hope. Are you crying, Prince? <laughs> Bless. 
play a little music. Aren't you going to answer it? No. Well, have you come here with ripe words of consolation? How is he? The doctor is with him now. He's dying. But then we are all in that unhappy condition. I may as well say at the outset that I do not in the least blame you. Collier's attitude is ridiculous. Oh, ridiculous. Besides, the real culprits, if you must blame anything other than his dissolute life, the real culprits are Lebedev and myself. Myself and Lebedev. He harried the old man. I humiliated him. We worried him and snapped at him and howled with pleasure to see him brought so low. Oh, God, Prince. He is in one of his strange moods. Leave us. I have something to say to the Prince that is private. That is how he talks to me. Like a housemaid. How is your mother? In front of the icons, praying. Collier, when he can tear himself away from father's bedside, rushes in every now and then to tell her it's all superstitious nonsense. It could make you laugh. H have you eaten? You, you must eat something and have hot tea. Don't be ashamed to cry. Don't be ashamed of anything. You're a good woman. Oh, I suppose under the present circumstances we can look forward to any amount of touching little scenes. Can I see your father? In a moment. Can you find no words of comfort for me? Your father loved you. And all your harsh words to him, all your mocking words, he has forgotten. When he thinks of you now, he sees the little boy who ran to meet him. The boy he threw up into the air and caught and kissed. He remembers you. He loves you. Ah, you are very good. It is almost a pity. What is almost a pity? Things, of course, are going very smoothly for you. Nastasia has refused your quixotic offer of marriage, but at least you had the pleasure, the credit, of offering to rescue a fallen woman. And for no profit to yourself. Nobody offered you money to do it. Not like they did to me. Don't blame yourself. Don't blame myself? That you agreed to marry her for money. It was venal of you, perhaps, but that is all in the past. Thank you. And now you are free to marry the woman you truly love. The innocent Miss Aglaya, isn't that the case? Well, nothing has been said. Nothing can be said. But you want to, don't you? And everybody wants you to. Even Nastasia wants you to. My own feelings are a little more ambivalent. I know you have a fondness. A man does not mind a rival. It adds to the pleasure of the pursuit, but really, are you truly to be compared to me? And just look at us. You are a very fine-looking man. I am more than that, you fool. Do you know what I received as I sat here waiting for my father to die? No. A letter, a most kind letter. Aren't you going to ask me who it's from? Who was it from? Miss Aglaya. Yes, it seems she is not so won over to you as you fancied. Maybe it won't all go as well as you planned. Why don't you say something? Aren't you dying to ask me what she wrote? Ganya, you're lying to me. Miss Aglaya has not written to you. I'd better go and find Collier. Prince, if... excuse me. I don't know if I will ever forgive Ganya for how he was with Father this morning at Lebedev's. But as far as you're concerned, I have decided in the end to forgive you. Besides, I want you to talk to him. To talk to my father. The others don't like to sit with him much. Hold his hand. I think he can feel it. Are you all right? Thank you for forgiving me. Well, 
I haven't got many friends. I have to be practical. <laughs> Poor old General. Don't you just feel so sorry for him, Aglaya? Yes. And there is no hope, Prince? Oh, what his wife has had to put up with. Wives are the unsung martyrs of this world. I have no intention of being one, thank you. If anyone is going to burn at the stake, it won't be me. But you still haven't explained what you were doing coming to the house last night at nearly midnight. I mistook the time. When it's pitch black, you can usually assume it's night. Aglaya. Yes, Mother? She's in a very nervous, irritable humour today. Did you read the letters? Whose letters? Her letters to me. The ones I gave you. Yes, I, I read them. I hope you told her not to write to me anymore. No, I didn't tell her that. But you've seen her. You saw her yesterday. Are you talking of that unfortunate woman? Nastasia Filipovna? Yes. But we won't mention her again. Well, that's two topics of conversation out of the way. Sickness and love. What can we turn to next for entertainment? Oh. I, I, I saw her by accident. I saw her last night as I was leaving here. She thought I'd been with you here in the evening and she was waiting for no, me. You are I... being horribly incoherent, you know. I hope you won't be like that tomorrow night. We are having a gathering, to which, of course, you are cordially, etc., etc. Might I ask you one thing? Certainly. Do not sit or stand anywhere near the Chinese vases. They are very valuable, and I'm afraid you might knock them over. I will stay clear of them. And, insofar as is possible, talk sense. Nobody wants to hear your views on public executions or on the meaning of beauty or economics or whatever it is that pops into your head. Try and talk like an ordinary person. An ordinary person? Is this a way to speak to the prince? Our guests are superior people. Sophisticated people. The leaders of society. At least that's what they think they are. Many of them are come with the express intention of meeting you. <laughs> of forming a judgment of you. They are all in one way or another associated with my family. Do you understand the significance of the event? I think so. I just want you to do one thing. Don't embarrass me. I will sit still and say nothing. Well, if you sit and say nothing, they will think you a nincompoop. What a lovely expressive word. Nincompoop. No, you must smile and circulate and say intelligible things. Not intelligent things. Intelligible things. If I circulate, I'm sure to walk straight into one of those Chinese vases. Don't tease me. Would you be angry if I didn't come? Oh, you would love me to tell you that. You would love me to reveal my hand, wouldn't you? Oh, my heart. A sentimental fool like you would love me to reveal my heart. I would. But how am I to do that when all that woman has to do is click her fingers and you will run off? Not even because you love her. You would, you would marry a, a scullery maid if she was pregnant and needed a father for her child. This is a most indelicate and inappropriate conversation. Prince... You have been invited as my relation to this house. I will be blunt. You're an excellent man in many ways. I hold you in great esteem. But neither I nor my husband wish for any closer tie with you. You are ill. You are odd. I know. It is one thing me insulting him, but I will not allow anyone else to. That is enough, Mama. You should go now, Prince. Be here tomorrow at seven. Ladies? I will walk you to the door. I will, Mama, so you needn't wink at me. Will you forgive me? For what? For speaking to you so insolently. I am jealous of her, I won't deny it. And I'm nervous about tomorrow. I want everyone to see in you what I see in you. It's a test. If it goes well, then my parents can't say that you... They can't object to you. I'm absolutely without shame, aren't I? You are kinder to me than I deserve. Go. I will see you tomorrow. Until then. If you were to lean down, I, I could kiss you. <sighs> Why is it that my heart aches? When I am dazzled by happiness. She kissed me. 
for all her sharp little words, she trusts me and has such hopes for us. Aglaya. Aglaya. But what if in my case the world is not wrong and your parents are right to warn you against me? I can't bear to believe that. That was episode three of The Idiot by Dostoevsky. Dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray. Prince Mishkin was played by Paul Rees. Rogozhin by Roger Allam. Ganya by Alex Jennings. Nastasia by Leah Williams. And General Evolgin by Stephen Moore. Lebedev was played by Gerard McDermott. Mrs. Yapanshin by Paula Jacobs. Aglaya by Tracy Ann Oberman. Kolya by Carl Prekop, Varya by Gemma Churchill, and The Man by Jonathan Keeble. The Idiot was directed by Cherry Cookson. The Idiot by Dostoevsky. Dramatized for radio in four episodes by Melissa Murray. With Paul Rees as Prince Mishkin, Alex Jennings as Ganya, Roger Allam as Rogozhin, Leah Williams as Nastasia, David Swift as General Yapanchin, and Paula Jacobs as Mrs. Yapanchin. Episode four. No, 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 put them over there. And then please move that lamp over there, yes? Oh, that's better. Um... There's a gentleman here who wants to see you, Miss Aglaya. A gentleman? Well, Mr. Ganya Evolgin, to be precise. Oh. Would I show him in, or will I show him the door, Miss? Oh, I'm very busy. I have a thousand and one things to do before the party tonight. He tried giving me five roubles, and he's wearing cologne. I wouldn't bother with him. No, you'd better send him to me here. Oh, what are those? Peacock feathers and ferns. And what am I supposed to do with those? My God, think of all those poor bald birds shivering to death to give us a moment's pleasure. My dear Miss Aglaya, what a pleasure it is to see you and to see you looking so entirely beautiful and radiant. Yes, um, could you give that man a hand with the table? Anything to oblige you. No, no, it was better where it was. I felt I had to see you. I had to come and see you. Why? We are old friends. Once perhaps we were more than friends, but let's not talk of that. Oh, yes, let's not. Assuming you have any delicacy of feeling, it would be extremely embarrassing for both of us. Aglaya. Oh, heavens. I haven't asked you about your poor father. Oh. How is he? How is your mother? What, what do the doctors say? Oh, they can be the greatest fools in the world. And how is your brother? Oh, you must send Kolya my thoughts. He and I have sometimes irritated one another, but poor boy, to have been there with his father when he took ill, that the prince told us all about it. My father is progressing satisfactorily. And for it to have happened in the street. In the street, in public, surrounded by a crowd of idle fools. I hope the prince omitted no detail. Why do you speak to me in that tone? What tone might that be, Miss Aglaya? Perhaps I do not relish discussing my family affairs in front of your servants. Oh. I'm sorry. That was thoughtless of me. You are having a party, I see. Well, my mother is anxious to introduce the prince to all our friends. Do I take it, then, that matters are finalised between you and the prince? What on earth do you mean? Am I to congratulate you? Am I to wish you joy and happiness? Might I even expect an invitation to the happy event? On such an occasion, all sorts are invited. It need not be such an exclusive event as tonight clearly is. Has anyone ever told you that you have the most unpleasant manner? You have done me that honour on four previous occasions. Why have you come here? Do you wish to quarrel with me? Are you engaged to the prince? Are you? How dare you ask me questions like that? I understand. No, you don't understand anything. Oh, thank you. I won't get angry with you. I won't. Although you would provoke an archangel. Ganya, oh, can't we talk like two civilised people? I will say something nice to you. 
and something truthful. For all your abrasive manner, I believe you to be, fundamentally, a good man. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> you look so much nicer when you laugh, you know. Do I? <laughs> well, will you sit down and talk with me? What would you like to talk to me about? Let me guess. The Prince. You are his friend, aren't you? His intimate friend. Am I? Well, at least you do spend quite a lot of time with him, don't you? I, I know he's there for hours in your house, and your apartment, with your father. Oh, I do hope your father gets better. We all do. Ganya, do you think the Prince really is ill? That he is because of the epilepsy, to use that horrible word, an idiot? I think that I am. His manner is very strange, but not foolish exactly. Perhaps it is all affectation. Well, I don't believe that. He had that appalling fit. I know you were going to say that was weeks and weeks ago and that he is perfectly all right now. Is that what you would like me to say? I'm certain that he does not love her. The beautiful Nastasia Filipovna. Though the whole world knows he offered to marry her. In fact, as far as I know, the offer is still open. He did that from pity. She is a poor, wretched creature. He does not love her. I'm certain of that. You are sure he is well. You are sure he doesn't love anyone else. Your natural modesty prevents you from adding that you are sure that he loves you. Even if he hasn't as yet asked you to marry him. What do your parents think of the match, by the way? Not entirely enthusiastic? Never mind. You will do as you wish. In fact, that's half the fun, isn't it? Running headlong into disaster. Ganya, please help me. I need to know. Is he all right? Do you think he's all right? I'm afraid of this illness of his. Have pity on me. I regret to say I am not a medical man and can give you no opinion of the matter. Good day. You look very well. Thank you. What a lot of people. You will manage. I know you will. This will be a night we will always remember. Yes. <laughs> Mama. So, you're the young man we're all here to meet. Forgotten your name already, I'm afraid. I'm Prince Leo Nikolaevich Mishkin. Did I know your father? Well, he, he was a soldier, a cavalry officer. My family is not very distinguished, I'm afraid. Just small landowners. Landowners? Mm. Of course, it was a well-meant gesture, no doubt, to free the serfs, to use the camp phrase. But really, what did it mean? The countryside awash with discontented peasants and us landowners ground into dust and ashes. Your view? Oh, I, I, I'm not a political man. Nonsense. No, I, I'm afraid I, I do talk a lot of nonsense, yes. It's a mixture of my temperament and my ignorance and my nervousness. I was very nervous about this evening. Oh, this is a very tame affair. What do you do, young man? I suppose you're going to tell me you're a poet. I might as well say now I've no time at all for the stuff. No, I'm not a poet. Oh, I'm delighted to hear it. See that man over there? The one with the red whiskers? Yeah. First time he's been out in public for months. Poor man. Yes, indeed. His younger son has joined the Jesuits. Personally, I think the father might have borne it if it had just been a matter of him becoming a Catholic. But to actually become one of their priests and a Jesuit one at that... Well, we are all Christians, I suppose. Many Catholics, of course, are worthy and excellent people. Excellent. But the religion itself is not a true religion. That's a very particular assertion. Well, what does the church, their church, preach? That it is justified, that it is necessary to seize temporal control of the world. Well, what has that to do with the soul's need for salvation? The Pope has forced his way onto the throne of Mammon. That is not religion. That is a Roman Empire continued in another guise, but still rapacious, still arrogant, more arrogant, spreading lies and darkness, darkness and lies. Are you enjoying yourself, gentlemen? We will have a little music presently. This young man has very interesting views. I like to hear someone with decided opinions. You are an original, sir. No, I am talking too vehemently. General Lupanchin, I, I, I'm so sorry. And on matters of theology, I'm afraid I must confess, I am woefully ignorant. It's not a matter of theology, not at all a matter of theology. It is not. Perhaps we had better drop the subject. Perhaps you and I might find a quiet corner, Prince. Well, you are a father. What greater torment could a father suffer than to see his son ally himself with the forces of spiritual slavery? 
No, I, I, I pity him with all my heart. Where is he? I must go. He is over there, a little distance from your young cousin. She is looking at you with anxious eyes. Is he drunk? No, 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 no I'm not drunk. A little overwhelmed by the company, the heat, the noise. I hope we are all enjoying ourselves. It's the oddest thing that when anyone speaks in a heartfelt way in this country, the first question to be asked is, are you drunk? <laughs> well, it is true that I rarely drink. My health does not allow me to drink. But Christ, I feel, loves those that seek intoxication. He loves them for their hunger, for their desperation, for their, their striving for oblivion. He sees in them a willingness to put aside pride, yes, even dignity, to give themselves over to exaltation, however misplaced that exaltation is. Is he talking about Catholics still? General! You're talking a little loudly. People are staring. Can't you do something? What can I do? Frog march him out of the room. I knew this evening would be a disaster. I knew. No. Blessed are those that hunger. Oh. Blessed are those that thirst. Oh. Blessed. Blessed. Tell me. Is there a difference between an intoxication of the senses and an intoxication of the soul? For God's sake, control yourself! Is he saying that Christ was a drunk? We are, we are one creature, body and spirit. We cannot be separated. No one is trying to separate you. Please, Prince. In the end, there is only the exaltation, the power of God, pushing into the clay to make it live, to make it human. He raises us up. He raises us up. He raises us up! Oh my god! Do you know how long the prince has been stirring a spoon round that cup? Twenty three minutes. I know, because he gave me his watch, and it's a Swiss one. Go in and see him. Collier, won't you speak to me? No. I know you blame me for your father's illness, and perhaps I am a little to blame. The whole incident with the money, the 400 roubles, he did steal them from me, but never mind. I should have borne the loss without a word. I should not have confronted him. You think that brought on the stroke? Oh. Do other people think that? Do they? Prince. Can one really be unhappy? What do my grief and unhappiness matter? Even the most wretched man can find joy in this world. On the way to his execution, a man might pass a tree and see sharply, clearly, for the first time, that natural life is perfect because of its very imperfections. In the first place, it wasn't that bad a fit. And in the second place, I thought those Chinese vases very ugly. You only broke one of them, and there's no need to make a fuss. You look well, so don't mope. How's your father? Ganya sat with him last night. This morning when I came in, they were both asleep. Ganya's hand resting on my father's arm. I forgave him everything. Once a week or so, I have to forgive him everything. It used to confuse me when a good man behaved badly. But it's even worse when a bad man behaves well. I, um... I have a message for you. Hmm. It's from Miss Aglaya. Yes? I don't want to upset you. For some reason, you look very young today. Younger than me. I have lines on my forehead. Look at them. Hmm. How old are you again? Twenty-seven. Can I have the note? She didn't have time to write anything. I called to the house and she took me off into a corner. How is she? I, I don't know. Fine, I suppose. She said to say to you that you must stay in today. You must stay in. And on no account must you leave this house. She was very definite. Uh, and did she say why? No. I didn't ask her. Well, I could tell she meant it, though. She said it more than once. You are to stay at home all day until at least uh, nine o'clock this evening. It might have been seven, but stick with nine to be on the safe side. She's angry with me. <sighs> she is ashamed of me. I made myself look a fool in front of all those people, and of course that reflects on her. I wouldn't worry about what she thinks. 
I promised on my honour to give the message. I've done that, and now I'll give you my opinion of the message. Is it a harsh opinion? Um, one of her sisters was teasing her about you. She, Miss Aglaia, flushed. In fact, she turned bright red and said, I have never given him any promise. I do not regard him as my fiancé. The very idea is as ridiculous as he is. I have to say, Mrs. Yapanchin turned on her in a moment. Not that she's the least bit keen on you marrying her daughter, but she does like you. She does. And respects you. The fits mm. are nothing. You think too much of them. I... I never asked her to marry me. Well, there you are. Look, maybe she was just worried about you, and that's why she wants you to stay at home. Do you believe that? No. Well, perhaps they have important visitors, and she wants to keep me out of the way. Hmm. I was thinking of calling on her today. It seems to me that neither of us is very happy. And I say to that, so what? Hmm? Prince, I am your friend. I can't stay. For one thing, it offends me to be under that man's roof. And secondly, I must go home and try and see if my father will eat anything. Half his mouth isn't working. He looks comical. You're very kind to come here and talk to me. Will you come and take a walk in the garden, dear Prince? No, thank you. Come and sit on the veranda. I'm staying here, thank you. You overheard the conversation. What an obedient soul you are. You interpret her wishes, her commands, to mean you may not step even onto the veranda. If she sent you a hair shirt, would you wear it? If she sent you a scourge, would you whip yourself? I heard you and Collier talking, though I couldn't exactly make sense of what you were saying. Fit still has you a bit addled. I eh? meant your voices were muffled. He very not that... kindly informed me that I would be permitted, under sufferance, to visit the old general, his father and beg his forgiveness for accusing him of stealing 400 roubles from you me. You must behave yourself, Lebyadiev. I will, I will. The fact remains, he did steal 400 roubles from me. Oh, I know I got the money back from Gan. You got your money back from me. I got 400 back from both of you, actually. And don't bother telling me how disgraceful, etc. Besides, you will find it a good investment. I haven't been idle, you know. I have a nice bit of news for you. Hmm? Though, in point of fact, it's more irritating than nice. Distressing, even, in the sense that it might well upset you. And could I have that on my conscience? You having been ill the night before. Help me, Prince. Should I talk or be silent? You will talk, because you cannot help yourself. But it's you that I wish to help. So, what did I do this morning? I, myself, went to Miss Aglaia. You did what? <laughs> that has perked you up. I'm as good as a tonic. <laughs> yes, I went to see her. Why shouldn't I go and see her? I am a retired civil servant. Besides, I had written to her on a number of occasions, all returned unopened. What a perfect lady she is. But the note I sent her this morning at the crack of dawn, that was opened. She replied to that note. Can you guess what she wants from It is me? impossible to guess. You used to speak more kindly to me than that. How we corrupted your good nature, dear man. So, I went to see her because... Of course, it wasn't for the pleasure of my company she agreed to see me. I thought she might appreciate a little inside information, a little news about you, but that wasn't it. She fixed me with a stern eye and ordered me to fix up an appointment between herself and a certain party. A female party. She wanted you to arrange a meeting with Nastasia. Between herself and Nastasia Filipovna, yes. Do you know, the other night I had the most interesting dream. I dreamt that I was being smothered by a wet rag. A wet rag was pushed into my mouth until I choked. I woke up choking, and guess who was murdering me? Ragoshin. Now you're getting into the mood of things. Excellent. Miss Aglaia didn't like me. None of you fine young ladies and lovelorn gentlemen like me. I asked her in the most pleasant way if she'd decided once and for all to dump Ganya. Did you know she saw him the afternoon of the party? 
<laughs> what a funny colour you've gone. Jealous? Oh, where was I? Oh, yes, asking her about Ganya. Miss Aglaya, I said, have you decided to have done with him forever? Meaning Ganya. Have you, in short, decided to run after Miss Nastasia and pick up her leavings? Meaning you, Prince. For a good three minutes, she was absolutely silent. I was afraid she might have misunderstood me. But she understood me. She nearly hit me. Did you arrange the meeting? Indeed I did. How are they to meet? The where and the when are easy. This very afternoon, Miss Aglaya is to meet Miss Nastasia by the bandstand in the gardens. Parasols at twenty paces. <laughs> no, it's all too serious to make jokes about, isn't it? And that, by the way, is the explanation of why Miss Aglaya instructed you to stay indoors today. She doesn't want you taking a walk in the park at the wrong moment. She doesn't want you blundering about and upsetting her plans. And what are her plans? We have the where and when, but the why. The why. Ah, that's a less decipherable matter. Why does she want to meet Nastasia? She doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> Unlike the rest of us, eh? No, no. What you need is someone on the spot to lurk in a bush and spy on the ladies and give you a full report back. And who is singularly equipped to undertake that odious task? Me, of course. I will do it. Yes. I'm leaving this house. Collier will come and collect my things tomorrow or the next day. Do not follow me. Do not go into the park this afternoon. Have I offended you in some way? Aglaya, <sighs> wait. <sighs> He told you then? Yes. Of course he swore he wouldn't. So, are you coming with me? You're strong enough to bear this? I'm well today. Aglaya, I'm sorry if my behaviour embarrassed you yesterday at the party. <sighs> what are you doing? This is madness. Why do you want to see her? It doesn't matter. Take my arm and we will walk. Don't speak to me. I must keep all the things I want to say to her in the forefront of my mind. She's over there, by the lake. Yes, I, I see her. Let me look a little before I approach. Oh, she is dressed for this. It will be a battle, then. Okay, let me take you home. That Can man on the bench, watching her walk up and down... Is that recursion? Yes. Aglaya, please be kind to her. Oh. Remember how she has suffered. She's easily irritated. She might say things that will wound you. Oh, she's seen us. I can't turn back now. Come over here, Prince, and sit beside me. We're not centre stage here. We are to be onlookers and umpires. Sit down, sit down. You needn't glance about you like that. I am sober and peaceful. Sit down. And you needn't worry about that lousy cockroach Lebyadev. I sent him a warning. I'll peel his skin off if he shows his face here. Go on, ladies. <clears throat> Can we walk a little? I, I would like to talk to you in private. <sighs> You know, of course, why I asked you to meet me. I know nothing. I can't believe that. I'm not responsible for what you believe. You're making this very difficult for me. You asked to see me. Here I am. What can I do for you? All those letters you wrote to me about how much you loved and respected me, what were they? What did they mean? Nothing. I laughed when I read them. Good. I won't descend to your level. Descend to my level? Are you going to tell me, us, what that level is, Miss Aglaya, from your lofty pinnacle of untouched virtue? I have come here to speak to you as one human being to another. I decided what I was going to say to you before I came here, and I won't change my mind now. I won't, even if you look at me in that supercilious way. Even if I find that I don't like you at all. You wrote to me. Now I will reply. I will. Reply, then. No one is stopping you. I met the prince and could see in an instant what a pure, what a simple-minded soul he was. 
Then when I discovered that he had become, through pity, entangled in the affairs of a woman like yourself, I trembled for him. In his innocence, he offered to marry you. You ran away. It was all very dramatic. But somehow, you could not let go of him. Does it please you to torture a man like him? It would have been forgivable if you had any feeling for him, but you were too selfish, no, too vain, too full of self-regard to feel anything for anyone else. It amounts to a mania, your self-love. You are a mad woman, and your letters to me prove it. You are in love with your dishonor. That is the passion that consumes you, body and soul, and above all, you want to flaunt it. What would you do without your dishonor? What would you be without your tragedy? An ordinary woman. I am an ordinary woman. I am not beautiful as you are. I am not racked with rage and self-loathing. What do you see when you look at the prince? Let me tell you what I see. I see the man that I love. Now you can laugh. Throw back your head and laugh at me. I'm not going to laugh, Miss Aglaia. I'm not even going to deny the truth of what you've said to me. My wounds I have exposed to the world. I could not keep silent. Neither should you. Speak. You know what I want to ask of you. Perhaps. But you must say it to me yourself. I want you to stop interfering in his life and in my life. Don't write to me again. Don't tell me that only my marriage to the prince will free you to become a respectable woman, that you'll marry Mr. Rogorjian if I marry the prince. I wrote you those letters because I was a fool. I took you for some kind of an angel. If the prince loved you, why, you must be something exceptional. Now I see exactly what you are, exactly what you want. You came here today for one reason. To see finally if the prince loves me more than he loves you. Oh. You're a woman eaten up with jealousy. Jealous of you? My God, you are absolutely mad. I will not blame you for this outburst. I will admit that at least I am very disappointed in you. I had thought you were a much better person than this. It is strange, but I even thought you were prettier than I see you are today. Oh, a palpable hit that, eh? First real blood to my girl. But remember this. If he is yours, he is yours because I permit it. If I were to say now, Rogozhin, you must leave. If I were then to say to the prince, remember your promise. What do you think would happen? I know what would happen. You know what would happen. I must beg you not to upset, not to humiliate her anymore. You... you are addressing those words to me, aren't you? She, she's so unhappy, so tortured. Please be merciful. Look how pale she is. Her lips are as white as her face. What are you saying? Are you so blind? So foolish? My God, your eyes are full of tears for her. <laughs> Help me. Nastasia is going to faint. Go after her. You, you must go after her. What is he doing? He wants to cool your forehead. He's wetting oh. his handkerchief in the lake. I used to have terrible headaches when I was a boy. I spent hours in the dark with wet rags over my forehead and face. There. She is gone. You have driven her from the field, yes. Why are you holding her hand, Prince? Because I won't let him go. I won't. I will hold on to him with all my weak strength. But I will let you go. You I will dismiss. Go away, Rogozhin. Your time is done. Go! I'll go now. But I am not easily defeated. Not for long. You will see me again. Of that you may be sure. <laughs> I am so tired, so weary, so afraid. Not of him. Not of him. Don't leave me. I'm here. <laughs> I'm sitting beside you. Will, you. will you keep your promise? Is that what you want? I want 
You. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. The answer's the same. What answer is that? Same answer as it was yesterday and the day before. They won't see you, sir. Not Mrs. Yapanchin on her own, nor the General, nor any of the young misses. I've been asked to say, sir, they would be obliged if you'd stop calling to the house every day. It does no good. It makes them feel that bit besieged. Are they well? Well, it's not my place to comment on their health or happiness, but if you want my opinion... Oh, I do. I'm very worried about Miss Aglaya. I think she has entirely misunderstood the situation. Not that I blame her. I think that I have handled matters very poorly. I know I have. The thought that I've wounded her is a torment to me. Is it true that you've agreed to marry that other one? Yes. You'd better go, sir, hadn't you? I, I say that as kindly as I can. Thank you. I'll be off then. Goodbye, sir. I'll call again tomorrow. Yes, I've no doubt you will, sir. Thought I heard voices in the hallway. You're like a ghost, Prince. Not just because you haunt the scene of your crime, but because you are really very horribly pale. You need a nice steak. Come on. I'll walk you to your hotel. Then you can buy me dinner. You're supposed to eat your food, not play with it, you know. Uh, sorry. It's not me you have to apologise to. You have done well. One moment everybody loves you, everybody sings your praises, and now a fall, a positive plummet from grace. Wine? No? Sure? Well, I won't let it go to waste. Have you seen Aglaya? We'll talk about her later. I was very glad to hear that you have moved out of that man's house. Lebedev's. What a piece of poison he is. And hand in glove with Ragorjin. I could never understand how a man like you put up with him. Have you heard much from Ragorjin, by the way? I imagine he's a bit peeved at the moment. It's provocative, surely, to drive round the city in an open-topped carriage for all to see you. You and Nastasia cuddled up together. Nastasia likes carriages. She likes the fresh air. Yeah, I bet she does. Are you really going to marry her? Of course I am. There's no of course about it. I must marry her. I must. I think I hoped for a while that she and Ragorshin could comfort one another. Comfort one another? She suffers from an anguish that cannot be assuaged. Hardly a reason for marrying her, that. Sometimes I can hardly bear to look at her. Even to look at her seems a violation. I'm afraid of her. No, no, that's not right. I... I... You should be more simple-minded about your love affairs. All this high-flown sentiment is rather aggravating. You've dumped one girl and taken up with another. That's it. Tell the truth. It's Rogozhin you're afraid of rather than poor Nastasia. I'm afraid. Yes? I think that Nastasia is... mad. Mad? What? Actually mad? I mean, she is... I cannot put into words what she is. You love her? With all my soul. But what about the lovely Aglaya? Don't you love her? With all my heart. You have made an absolute mess of things. All of us suffer for your elevated notions. Let me tell you something. They are both real women, not disembodied spirits or representations of the divine. You are a schoolboy. Perhaps I am. Even Collier will be ashamed to talk such nonsense. Oh, how is he? I wonder if Aglaya isn't a little crazed herself. I was seeing her this morning, you know, a social call. I hadn't intended to speak. Not so soon. Not while all this was still going on. You've hurt her pride, you know. 
Well, we were talking, and I heard myself say, to my own surprise, I heard myself ask her to marry me. What did she say? I'm not a spontaneous man. I'm... I'm a grimy calculator. Nevertheless, overcome, presumably, by emotion, I proposed. She got up and went over to the mantelpiece and lit a candle. She said she wanted me to hold my hand in the flame to prove how much I loved her. What a thing to ask me! One wants me to burn my money, the other to burn myself. And did you? Did you put your hand in the flame? There are no bandages on my hand, are there? But you see how your nonsensical way of carrying on has infected her. Let's change the subject. You asked about Collier. Yes. He refuses to leave our house at the moment. God, it's taking a long time for that old man to die. Weeks and weeks. By the time it comes, it will be a relief to everyone, him included. When I go, I hope I just get struck down by something. Here and gone in an instant. What do you think, Prince? What? Can I order another bottle of wine? I'm asking because you're paying. I went to the house, you know, to beg his forgiveness. To beg that brave old soldier's forgiveness, General Evolgin. What a man. Of course, Ganya would not let me in. In fact, he threatened to kick me down the stairs. Is that Christian? Still, today of all days, I will be magnanimous and not mention the fact. So, Prince, on the day of his funeral, will you forgive me in General Evolgin's name? Let me kiss your hands. Don't do that. I must. I must kiss your hands as a sign of repentance, as a sign of my abjectness. Did I drive that poor old man to his grave over the theft of 400 roubles? I am ashamed. I am so ashamed. Forgive me, Prince. I forgive you. Stay and talk to me here. Don't go into the church. Where is Nastasia Filipovna? In the carriage. She thought it best to stay in the carriage so there wouldn't be any kind of public scene. Are there your pensions here? Yes, they are here. And Ragoshin is here. I think you should go. He is very angry, very, very angry. I will tell Kolya that you came to pay your respects. I will even go and fetch him for you. Yes, the service won't be starting for a while. No, no, don't do that. Leave Kolya in peace. I'll see him. I'm glad to see you. Will, you. will you speak to me? Will you listen to me? I know that you're angry with me. Look, I am trying to save her. I know that you loved her, but it was a cruel, consuming kind of love for both of you. I don't blame you. Prince! Get off him! Mind his legs, he has a kick like a mule. Oh, very well. As my father's funeral, you are an animal. An animal. If we let you up, will you go? Don't let him up. Will you go without making more of a scene? I'll go. We will meet again, Prince. I hope so. Don't hope. Fear it. I had better go after him and try to calm him down, hadn't I? Let's go. You're welcome to him. He'll just come up with another vile plot. Why do you even talk to him? Your father was a good man. I'm very sorry that he is dead. I feel very sad for you and your family. Collier, I'd better go. Nastasia is waiting for me in the carriage. I look at you, Prince, and I can't imagine what you feel. Do you love either of them? These poor women. I even feel sorry for Aglaya now. She is freezing and shrinking, getting crossed of armor to protect her from the world. What have you made of her? I think you feel nothing. I think you have loved only yourself in all this, and not even your real self, but an imaginary knight errant, the prince. When is the wedding to be? Soon. We need an end to this story. Look at this. Look at this. Isn't it lovely? A veiled 
to cover me up. I never thought, not since I was a child, I never thought I would be a bride. Yes. It is a beautiful dress. Do you like it? Do you like it? I am so happy. I'm so happy I want to sing. <laughs> Can I have singing lessons when we're married? We will go to Italy, to Milan, bowls of olives and opera. Prince, do you love me? Yes, I love you. What are you thinking? Well, just that perhaps we might have a quieter time on our wedding day. A private ceremony, perhaps. It does you no good to get too overexcited. You worry about me. My God, what am I doing to you? What am I doing? How am I so fortunate to have found you? You are my saviour and my saint. Hush now. I will marry in the biggest church in Petersburg. I will defy the world. Which one of them is she marrying? The white-faced one. Poor sod looks terrified. <laughs> Come on, Prince. We'll have to push through. Come on. <laughs> and here she is. On time, the eager bride. The spotless, pure and virgin bride. <laughs> oh, this is appalling. It certainly is. She looks as though she wishes she had thunderbolts in her hands to blast them all to hell. Wave to her. My men will get her through, never fear. He's recording. Move back. Move back, move back. He's a wicked in his hand. I am here. Get away from her, you rabble. What? what kind of man are you, Prince? Not to protect her from this. I'm coming, my love. What will we do now, Prince? I can give my chaps a signal and they'll bundle him off. No. Nastasia! What shall I do? You belong to me. Body and heart. You belong to me. Nastasia! Forgive me, Prince. I believed. For a moment, I could. Now, Rogozhin, for the love of God, take me from this. Take me away. Now! I will save you. She's going to him. What will we do now? What are you going to do? Stand here and watch? Yes. That's what you're going to do. It's incredible. She's jilting you, man. I'd better go back to my hotel. I'm very tired. I had better go back to my hotel. I'm very tired. Can you imagine? That's exactly what he said. I didn't think it was right to do that, to leave him on his own, so I brought him here. He was calmness itself. He might have expected it to happen. Maybe he hoped it would. One painful wrench, a bit of public humiliation, and then he's off the hook. Do you think Aglaia would have him back? No. I won't stand a chance. I'll have to find other fish to fry. I don't stand a chance with Aglaia, do I? We'd better go in and sit with him. I can't stay long. When did you sneak in? I don't know why you bother whispering in the corridor. We could hear every word you were saying. Feeling better? I, I, I'm perfectly well. And do you want me to find out if they're still in the city? I could go and ask at the train station. I'll do that. There's no point in staying here. Someone should get him to rest. Why did you take a rest, Prince? If you're going round to see the Yapanchins, I may as well tell you that they've left town. Left town? Yes. Damn, damn, damn. I'll be back later. Uh, keep, keep an eye on him. I warned you from the outset about that woman. I should feel gratified that I was proved right. <sighs> It, it's very kind of you to sit with me, but really I'm very well. Of course I am tired and perhaps I am a little upset, but I'm not angry, not, not with her. No one must speak harshly of her. What a nonsensical world this is. Would you like to rest, you poor man? I can get your old room ready in a moment. It would be nice to sleep. I 
keep trying to steel my heart against him. I say to myself, it is inexcusable to be that trusting, that innocent. And not only is it inexcusable, it is downright dangerous. What has he achieved since he came back to Russia? Did you see the way he sat there so quietly and patiently, not in the least agitated? I don't know what to do, fall at his feet or slap him, slap some sense into him. And over women of all things. Do you think all this will break his heart? Quiet. What's the matter? What? What did you hear? Knock on his door. Prince? Prince? He's gone. Where has he gone? He's gone to find them. To find her, hasn't he? No, no, he's, he's probably just gone back to his hotel. Let's not always assume the worst. Yes? I've come to see... There's Mr. nobody home. Tell Mr. Rogoshin that Prince Mishkin is here. There's nobody home. Did he come back here this afternoon? Well, can you at least tell me that? I can tell you that he's not at home. That's all I can tell you. Was Nastasia Filipovna with him? Was there a woman with him? I'm only allowed to say the one sentence, sir. You can ask what you like, you'll get the same reply. You can ask me the way to Siberia or the price of apples in Naples and I'll say only the one thing. Why? There's nobody home. I'm going upstairs. Will, will you stop me? Just nod or shake your head. Don't say your sentence again. Yes. Not, not to interfere. Just to see if all is well. I knew you'd come. I must go down and bolt the door now. We don't want strangers coming in. None of us want that. Will you wait for me here? Yes. Put your hand on the banister, Prince. Steady yourself. You're trembling. This is a cold house. My father was a cold man. Don't let's speak of him. You'll wait here for me. I'll wait. You can leave now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Get out of my house. <clears throat> We've no need to hurry matters now, Prince. Come and see my study. Come and see my books. I've been reading a lot lately. Not sure I understand anything. Won't you come down? Where is Nastasia? Take out the cross I gave you, and I will take out mine. We will never forget that we are brothers. I will never forget it. Sometimes I talk a lot of nonsense, and perhaps I seem a violent man, but I will never harm you. Never. Parfum. Yes? Can we light a candle? It's very dark here. No. No candles. Where is Nastasia? Here. You know she is here. Well, I'd, I don't wish to disturb her if she's asleep. You won't disturb her. Here is the prince to see you, my love. Come in, prince. There is nothing to see that will offend your modesty. You've never been in a woman's bedroom before, have you? No. Come in. Oh, 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 no, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. No, no harm done. She's nicely wrapped up. Oh. I seem to have missed her left foot. <gasps> What lovely feet she has. Strong like a dancer. I won't give her up. But I must think practically. Luckily, there's a lot of disinfectant in the house. I've poured it all around the room. That's my greatest fear. 
the smell. In a day or two, it will stink in here. I could order flowers, of course, to cover her up, but I'd, I don't want her covered up. I want to look at her. She's the most beautiful thing in the world. Oh, no. you, you can't have a fit. What, what would happen if you had a fit? People might hear you in the street. They might hear you and break the door down and take her from us. We don't want that, do we? Sit down here. I'll make us up a couple of beds next to one another, like soldiers. Can you help me move this sofa? I, I'm afraid I can't move. I'll just have to sit here for a bit. When I feel better, I'll get up and help you. Yeah, you're a kind man. Did you intend this? When you took her from me on our wedding day, is this what you intended to do? I don't know. It's not a matter of intentions. The knife was in my pocket all along, if that's what you mean. Will I bring you a rug? No, thank you. The good thing was that it was so sharp. The knife, it just went in. And you know, there was hardly any blood. A teaspoonful or two. I must have hit her right through the heart. Merciful, that, for everyone. Would you like to play cards? We could play cards for a while. We used to play cards. I'm not sure that I would be able to sleep just yet. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. I, I would so like to scream. But, but I, I daren't. I, I daren't. Did you hear a noise? Prince? Prince, you have to speak to me. Would you like me to stroke your head? I, I have cologne here on my handkerchief. Smell that. Disinfectant is a bit nasty, isn't it? I'm, I'm stroking your head now. That's my hand on your head. Don't worry. I'm here, and Nastasia is here. When the dawn comes, the room will have light in it, and we will see again how lovely, how precious she is. Do you think, Prince, that the dawn will come? Do you have faith in that? You! Who are you? Me, sir. Uh, no one. A servant here. No one. Well, what are you doing lying on the doorstep at three in the morning? Uh, nothing. I'll give him a kick. I'll refresh him. Uh, no need to do that, sir. I've been locked out, that's all. Oh, let's break the door no, down. No, no, First we'll knock on it. Ragorjin! Ragorjin, open up! Prince! Are you in there? Oh, I'm getting to hate that noise. He's been doing that for the last two hours. And you've just lain there and listened to it? Well, mostly I've put my hands over my ears. Oh. Move back. <laughs> what kind of a scream is that? The prince is an epileptic. But can't you break the door down any quicker? He stopped now. I keep thinking it's over and then he starts again. He was making a terrible noise. I tried to stifle it, you know, with a cushion, but then he couldn't breathe. That's better. A little light. You're a Gorshin, I assume. It's me, Collier. Can you open your eyes, Prince? And her in the bed? 
Oh, someone open the window, it stinks in here. She's dead, I take it. I've seen her go past in her carriage many a time. What a waste. So, which one of you is responsible? It was me. Keep the boy away from her. Oh, my God. Knife wound. Nice and neat. Right. Get up, Rogozhi. Uh, I can't leave her. I can't leave him. He's ill. Prince, can you hear me? Turn your head and look at me. I have your hand in mine. Can you squeeze it? Prince, for God's sake, rouse yourself. So what was his involvement in all this? He had none. Prince! I can't get through to him. What will happen now? Siberia for this one and the asylum for the other. That's my opinion. You ask me. He came too late to help me. Or to help her. But I will never blame him for that. Prince. Prince. <laughs> I could bear the fit. I could bear with them very easily. It's just that I am afraid that one day I will not get back into my body. Not properly. It's like having a great fire in one's mind, or in one's brain, rather. I am afraid that one day there will be such a conflagration that I will be swept away, burnt down to nothing. I will be left just sitting in the ashes, an idiot without reprieve and without hope. That is my fear. That was the final episode of The Idiot by Dostoevsky. Dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray. Prince Mishkin was played by Paul Rees, Rogozhin by Roger Allam, Ganya by Alex Jennings, Nastasia by Leah Williams, General Yepanshin by David Swift, and Lebedev by Gerard McDermott. Mrs. Yepanshin was played by Paula Jacobs, Aglaya by Tracy Ann Oberman, Kolya by Carl Prekop, Varia by Gemma Churchill, and The Footman by Martin Heider. The Idiot was directed by Cherry Cookson.